course, we'll keep you up to date right here uh, with this uh, latest update. We'll have much more as we go through the night tonight. Uh, you can see the, the hurricane warnings are still up. We're, we're about to get a new advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, the, I, the, the pressure now at 952, so that has gone up. This may be the new advisory. We'll wait and see. Uh, i got to check that for you. But still, the storm is now moving off uh, toward the northeast at 15. At 120. at 120. Okay, so it's set to make landfall. That's a 6 o'clock update or, or, or 7. What time is it? <laughs> I'm having a hard time figuring out what time it is. We're so busy in here right now. I, I've lost track of time. But, uh, again, the time? It's almost 7. 7 o'clock. So, and that's a 59, so it'll be 7 o'clock. Oh, 7 o'clock update. Okay. So there we go. There's the storm. I'm going to, uh, again... You guys know that although it seems calm now in Sarasota and in Venice and in Inglewood, the backside of the storm is going to move through, and we are eventually going to see those winds pick up again. They'll be uh, maybe not as intense, but still I would expect tropical storm force, maybe even hurricane force gusts as we move through the night. So it's not over. Even though the storms, everyone's focused on that middle, you have to realize it's a big storm. And I just, I just told you, I had a 60-mile-an-hour wind all the way down into Fort Myers. And look how far away it is from the center of the storm. So there's Fort Myers. They just had a 60. This is going to move up here. We're still going to see those strong winds uh, for at least, I would say, the next five hours and then starting to slowly come down. But slowly is the key word there. There's a little weather update. We'll bring you more updates as, uh, of course, the information becomes available. We'll break in. If there's any kind of uh, tornado warning, I think there will be. But if there's any more flood advisories and flood warnings that are taking place, we'll let you guys know, uh, Rob and Stephanie. Uh, it looks like we might have dodged a huge bullet, but it's not over yet. I don't think we're going to see any kind of catastrophic damage. I'm sure there's flooding, a lot of debris flying with those winds up to 77 miles an hour at the Sarasota Brady Airport within the last hour. Uh, that, that is uh, really bad because it's going to pick up debris. But for the most part, I can say it's not nearly as bad as what we anticipated at this point. Back to you. Thank goodness for that, Bob. Not out of the woods yet. But sounded very, very positive, so we're sort of hanging on every word. Absolutely. But you know what? Uh, a lot of folks in the dark, gosh, those numbers just in Sarasota County and Manatee County, they certainly shot up quickly. And I do believe we have some numbers with statewide outages, and there yes. they are right now is here. 68,680. Five power outages reported. That's across the entire state of Florida. Governor Ron DeSantis, as early as Sunday, the governor saying that this was to be and that a lot of folks would find themselves in the dark. And keep in mind, we're just seeing the initial uh, landfall of what we believe here the yeah, of the of Fulton. Yeah, they will, they will go up. And speaking of the governor, we are told that we are expected to hear from Governor Ron DeSantis uh, roughly in about 30 minutes, so around 7.30. He, of course, is manning things up in Tallahassee at the uh, State Emergency Operations Center. So uh, state officials are monitoring everything minute by minute, as you just said, Rob, especially with regard to those power outages. We talked about that. Area. We had Florida Power and Light, and then, of course, we have Duke as well. Uh, so people are uh, just, um, you know, everybody's kind of waiting for this storm to kind of move through. As Bob said, it's going to be a while. He said five to six hours yeah. uh, until things really calm down. But uh, so far, things are looking a lot better. Than it just feels like it's so much earlier, right? Broken eye wall. It's fine. Uh, do what you need to yeah. do. Just keep everybody safe. Yeah. And go on. Uh, again, power outage is a major issue. Again, still, even though maybe this is maybe not as strong as what we thought, at least initially, don't go out. It's still not, we're not nearly in the clear, right? We've still got a lot of layers, a lot of chapters ahead of us, and you're part of that. That's why we want you to stay with us all throughout the evening. Let's go live to show you what's in There's those palm trees. There's the palm trees again, looking much like what Stephanie I saw about. 20, 25 minutes ago. We yeah. The, uh, it doesn't look like that kind of sideways yeah. uh, rain, that really heavy, intense rain that we saw about 25 minutes ago, but still something that you uh, don't want to be out in the middle of if you don't. Yeah, absolutely. And um, again, you know, 
stay inside because, as we've now heard from officials, both in Sarasota County and even Charlotte County and Manatee County, uh, Sarasota Emergency Services are grounded. Uh, they said that all of their workers are sheltering in place. Sustained winds are too strong for the first responders to be on the road. If you need help, first responders telling us that you can, uh, you should call 911 and they will try to get to you as soon as possible. But uh, they say that they can no longer get to you right now. And do not put yourself at risk by leaving your home. It's uh, just not worth it. Hunker down, stay in place. It's not worth it. Yes, we are getting uh, some good news, what we think is positive positive news from Bob Harrigan, but we are by no means out of this at this point. Yeah, there's still critical hours ahead, and, and certainly we don't know what trajectory this will take as it goes across the state, right? A lot of our neighbors, a lot of our family members and friends all across the state affected some way or another by this storm, so we need to keep that yeah. in mind. Hopefully you still have the lights on, but this is a great time. If you do have some batteries, you've got that battery-powered radio somewhere in the closet, maybe something that you forgot about. It's still a smart idea to get that out now. Make sure the flashlights are ready just in case. We're going to take you now live to, this is, wow, a lot more active down there. Naples Pier, live shots there, very active uh, waves down there. We do know that we've got at least uh, one at confirmed tornado in the greater Fort Myers area a few hours ago. Don't know the extent of any injuries or fatalities at this point. We do not have those numbers. But this is a look there just a further south into the Naples area. Yeah, uh, and that those pictures are incredible. I mean, when you look at the force of that water moving through, uh, you certainly would not want to be on that here right now. No. Um, you know, if you recall, uh, we, when we had Hurricane Helene, we had those people that were pushed off by the force of the wind or the water at the jetty. Thankfully, they were rescued to safety, but this is a situation where you could easily be pushed off in the force of the wind and the water, and that is just so dangerous right there. Yeah, and look even at the end of the pier, that water coming up over right. the actual top of the pier itself. The waves are relentless. The power of the water is something that we cannot underestimate at any point or time, and especially when we have this type of a storm. And so the effects as we said, are going to be different. Maybe you're not in the eye wall of the storm itself, but you're going to see and feel some effects. Looks to our south, our friends there, maybe this may be against some of that heavy rain, and we definitely know at least one tornado. Yeah. That's just preliminary. And you can see the water coming over there. I'm wondering if we are able to take the picture of the, the live camera, if it's available, of the Skyway. Uh, can we get the Skyway cam? Okay, uh, Angel, um, can we get the Skyway cam by chance? Do you guys have access to that? I'm just curious. Okay. Oh, the cameras are not working. Okay, then that's what we were wondering because that is actually where, uh, you know, very you saw the highest concentration as the eye wall was making its way on shore. So, you know, it'd be really interesting to see that Skyway cam, but that makes sense that it wouldn't be available. Absolutely. Uh, keeping people safe. We know that the Skyway and so many major bridges, the airports all closed a lot earlier today. And so uh, that's so important to know that major transportation routes were cut off okay, we're down there as well get our monitor back up here. That would be great yeah, that to see where we're technology. at here. Uh, you know, but we're struggling with uh, basic technology. Yeah. Here, so. And you know, with the storm coming through and the winds, too, there's obviously some issues right. going on. So. Absolutely. So we're just trying to get our monitor up so that we can see what you're seeing at home. We have a big monitor down there. And here are some of the effects. That look like of midnight pass. The, uh, like midnight pass. I'm not sure our monitor is out here. But we you see some. Overhead stoplights oh, yeah. right there. there. Lots um, live cam of Stickney pass Point right at midnight pass out there. Uh, Ted showing us a lot of water flowing across that particular area out there. So uh, I don't. It's from the vantage. Here we go. Yeah, Our monitors back up. There we like go. There is some water in the distance, but by no means is it what we saw during Hurricane Helene. I no. mean, this is this is actually when you look at this somewhat encouraging for for folks because they were just inundated with that storm surge, and we saw the cat. 
catastrophic damage that that flooding did, that historic level flooding from Hurricane Helene. And so when you see this, yes, we don't like to see any surge coming across at all, but when you see this and you, it appears that the wa there's not even any water right there where those lights are flashing, I would say, fingers crossed, that looks like a very positive sign for now. We're not out of the woods because we still have the backside of of the hurricane, but uh, this is this is very encouraging for folks that live there, Rob. Yeah, absolutely. And we did see, what was it, about two hours ago, three hours, we saw a couple of uh, vehicles navigating down through there. At this point, uh, we see nothing, and at this time, that's a good thing. That's yeah. what we want. We want clear roadways. We don't want anybody to be out there. So, in fact, when and if the first responders have to get out there, they can do their job and get to where they need to be in a safe amount of time. But it doesn't look, I mean, you see some bouncing of the cameras there right now, yeah. some water trickling across the lens. Yeah. That is to be expected as uh, we have an earlier than anticipated landfall of what is now Hurricane Milton. And the visibility is a lot better than what you would expect to see at this point in time. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, again, but uh, we don't, we want to err with caution, yeah. right? That's what we're doing. That's why we are here in Lakewood Ranch, in case you're just joining us, at our makeshift studios, uh, relocating at least temporarily until the worst of the storm passes from our beloved home in downtown Sarasota to here at a safer, beautiful place uh, provided to us at Lakewood Ranch, keeping all the teams safe here. It took an army of technicians and everybody to get us set up over the last 24 to 48 hours, but here we are. So we may look different and feel different, but we're still here for you. Okay, we've got a, another guest on the phone. We always He's like making new friends. This is Melanie Bevins. She is the brain chief of police. And we are going to keep this as authentic as we are. So here she is. All right, Chief, can you hear me? It's Rob and Stephanie with ABC7. Okay, terrific. How are things out there right now? Have folks heeded the warning? so happy that you're there and safe, but I've been to your uh, offices many times. You are front and center right down there on the waterfront, albeit a beautiful view. Paint the picture of it, what it's like to be in that old building right now, and are you alone? How many folks are around you, and do you feel safe at this hour? Uh, no, well, so, no we're, we, we evacuated that building two hours ago. We are looking at it from across the street at the Bishop Museum, the, the whole night in the museum. You know, we had to evacuate our entire station due to the vicinity because we were so close to the coast. So we understand uh, kind of what you guys have went through, although uh, 45,000 pieces of evidence. I mean, my goodness, that sounds extremely daunting. That's a lot of work. All hands on deck? All hands on deck. Uh, the past two days, we have done nothing. And, and it's, it's, not, uh, it's not an easy process. It, it's the security of what we had to do uh, and the manpower to ensure every single piece of evidence of property went from point A to point B uh, in, in a precise manner. It, it really was a big deal. And, and we just ordered new guns. The guns had to go somewhere. Uh, really just everything. We we left tonight. I was the last person in that building, and I, I brought my, uh, 
my tower from my computer and, and head it out. So um, hopefully we can all walk back in there tomorrow. But um, the, the weather's pretty rough out here. We have a bird's eye view. We, we can see it pretty good. The water doesn't seem to be rising as quickly as we thought it would. So that's good news. But yeah. the wind is really, really whipping up. Yeah, and that uh, we have a picture on our screen in Bradenton. I believe this is far from where you are located. I believe this is on the Manatee River at the park near the hospital. Am I, am I right? Uh, so we're kind of seeing uh, live right now what you guys are going through. Uh, but the good news in all of this, according to our, our chief meteorologist, Bob Harrigan, is that the storm ended up, uh, the eye wall ha has made landfall. Uh, a lot lower than than what was what has been projected in the past. So uh, that is you know a silver lining in all of this. Well, silver lining for us, devastation for for our friends. Uh, I'm not exactly sure who's getting the, the brunt of it, uh, Northport, Sarasota. But I will tell you, if we don't need help tomorrow from law enforcement agencies, we will be the first ones to offer our help. Chief, that's a great point, and I want to take that up. With the eye of the storm and with how the trajectory of these things changes so quickly, especially along the Sun Coast and what we've learned this season, how do you decide the day after what resources are needed where? I assume it's a group effort. It is a major conference call, if you will, to say, hey, we need to dispatch our crew here or there. How do you kind of navigate the resources and the road to recovery after to help other local areas? Well, I'll tell you, from, from a city and county perspective, from the infrastructure, from down lines to debris, um, they, do a, they do a fantastic job. Manatee County and Brainton work so well together. From a police, law enforcement position, we, we get on the phone every day with each other. We have a, a great group through the Florida Police Chiefs Association. We put our missions in well in advance of what we think we may need should we experience the full brunt of the storm. And it's it's if if we wind up not needing those resources, I have eighty officers on standby to come into Bradenton tomorrow to help me police this area. Mm. And if I don't need them tomorrow, I'm simply going to say, go to the area that does. So we're, we're always very quick to be, um, be ready to help each other. They don't call you the friendly city for nothing, and that certainly is the case in this when all hands are on deck. As always, Chief, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your dedication and hope that uh, you and the rest of your staff and, in fact, the entire city uh, stay safe throughout the evening and throughout tomorrow. Yes, thank you so much, Chief. And Absolutely. Thank you. You too. And stay thank safe. Thank you. We'll check back with you. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we want to turn now to Leslie Lacey. She has an update. No, she's not ready yet. Okay. You know what? Um, it, before we get to Leslie, why don't we take a look inside Sarasota Memorial Hospital? Right. It's a key focal point along the Sun Coast. It's got uh, has been in Hurricane Milton mode mm. for the last several days, preparing there. You see all the top officials there, kind of navigating the new unknown of what we're seeing tonight and tomorrow are across sites in Sarasota, Venice, and Northport. They are carrying and supporting for more than 4,000 people, and that's not just patients, but also their staff. SMH workers locked into location since Tuesday, so wow. think of the momentum of that. Now, to accommodate Look them, child care, right? all the equipment there. Yeah, child care, dependent family care, and pet care also being provided at this time. In the Venice location of SMH, beds filling up and some of the less sicker patients are being attended to in the hallways and the lobbies, but even so, look, they're keeping the smiles on their faces as they do in emergency rooms. They're open at all three sides, but remember, crews, they cannot go out in a 45-mile-per-hour sustained winds. So that's probably what we're seeing at this point. So you need to make sure that if you need to call for help, know that there will be a wait time. And, you know, inside the hospital, uh, they have at least a seven-day supply of emergency supplies. And they have something called med sleds, and these are used if the patients need to be moved to different floors. So they are well-prepared, as we yep. know, and uh, they are there. The doctors and nurses are on staff right now inside the hospital uh, attending to patients. We want to turn now to Leslie Lacey. She has an update, a very important update on our forecast. Hey, Leslie. Hi. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. First of all, I just saw some uh, pretty compelling video 
know, there's a lot of power outages. We're going to get to those in, in a moment. But uh, over on uh, uh, Philippi Island, uh, we saw some video, uh, pretty intense conditions in general. And also there was a fire. We saw a lot of uh, uh, just sort of sparking and, and quick lights, maybe a little bit of an explosion or at least a power outage, but there was actually a fire in the distance out there. So let's talk about the wind gusts right now, okay? Uh, so they're kicking up. They're going down. They're kicking up. As these bands continue to go around, uh, we've still, we're still starting to move into uh, the eye of the storm here. We've got uh, 59 mile per hour winds out of the east here, uh, and this is uh, Lakewood Ranch, 42, clocking over here at St. Petersburg, Clearwater at 53. And as I highlight for localized in just a minute you can see that we've even got uh, more intense winds in this area so 49 in Tampa uh, easterly as well in Lakeland 36 and look at this down in Punta Gorda 64 mile per hour winds down there in Venice uh, we are at 38 so I want to go ahead and move on to uh, our next graphic here take a look at the radar in general uh, because as this continues uh, to move around uh, you, you're going to be able to see that we're starting to move into the eye so things are going to be getting a little bit calmer uh, before uh, they get a little bit more rough so i'm going to go ahead and check i'm going to go ahead and check on this and uh, move us forward there we go it looks like we're freezing up a little bit there we go got it all right, technology. When you're work when you're working remote, it's been a very interesting day. <laughs> so uh, the important thing to remember is this is not the time to go outside and uh, check out the hurricane force winds that uh, some areas are getting. But you can see just moving through here. This is just you know over the last uh, hour here, Anna Maria Isla getting pummeled, and as we move up, uh, Tierra Verde, St. Pete Beach starting to kick up as well as these winds move through Piney Point, Sun City Center area. And I want to go ahead and look at the velocity. So how many, look at this, Inglewood, north, 73 mile per hour winds, okay? Uh, basically, that's just about hurricane strength winds. 76 hurricane strength there. And as we look at this area, you can see Ruskin. Uh, anywhere that you see the red, that's a more powerful winds that are coming through, more intense winds. And as I back up, I just want you to look at this counterclockwise motion here, bringing in that onshore flow. But look right here, look right here, this particular area. It usually, when you're looking at a hurricane, uh, like Helene, uh, when we looked at it, the entire the entire area uh, had that uh, flow coming through. What's happening is we've got a trough, and that trough is bringing in drier air, and that's really been wonderful for us because um, it, it's just kind of reduced the storm surge for us, and it's reduced the rain amount. But we do have a flash flood warning that's in effect still in Manatee and Sarasota County, and Manatee County has already gotten over six inches of rain. And that was pretty much in that West Bradenton area. Uh, that was when uh, when the eye was starting to come on shore. So, so back up here, I want you to see these little boxes that we've made. Uh, this is actually from uh, the uh, center. So this area also to the north, moving a little bit east. Everywhere in these boxes, we are under a flash flood warning. And this is the area where we were seeing six inches. You can see the red coming through, those intense uh, rain bands and the intense wind coming in. This drier air has been really nice. So uh, right now, Fort Myers is getting a little bit of a break here, but the wind is still very powerful. There might not be as much rain down there, but don't let that fool you. Still very, very intense rain. So got a flash flood warning as well for Hardy, Hernando County. Storm surge situation. Like I said, we've gotten it's been a little bit uh, better than what we what we were expecting, but we're still not out of the woods yet. Still uh, upward to nine to, to 13 feet for Sarasota, about eight to 12 feet here uh, from Boca Grande down to Bonita Springs and about 8 to 12 feet as we move from Sarasota further north, encompassing the Tampa Bay area and shooting up, uh, up upwards towards about Hernando County. So we're not out of this. It's still going on. You know, the, the, the eye is, is coming on shore, and once the center gets on shore, that will be landfall. That is what we call landfall. So let's go ahead and move to our next map here. And I actually want to take a look at the, the uh, yeah, this is a good picture here. So you, again, you can see it. Now I want to take a look at the water vapor so I can show you, show you this dry air that has really helped us out, okay? So this water vapor has been just pretty much of a godsend for us. So it's, what it's done is it's come in here and it's, um, I just want to, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Look at this trough everywhere that you see right now, uh, right there. Oh, wait a minute. This area right here. Look how large this is. This is Texas, okay? Just give you an idea if it's hard to make out what's going on here. But this big trough, that's what's been steering, steering Milton up here, okay? 
And you can see right into there, that's a drier air pushing in. And this trough has really been good for us. Okay, this we're very, very lucky to have it. Let's take a look at these power outages. As I mentioned, uh, I did see a lot of intensity in some video that was just shown to me over at Philippi Island, some sparking that was going on, and also some fire. Sarasota County, over 36,000 people are without power. Manatee County, we're just under 20,000. Hardy County, 357, doing much better there in DeSoto County as well. But Pinellas County, uh, just uh, 38,986 and I believe uh, Hillsborough over 25,000, but look at Charlotte, 2,300, 2,389. Those are the people that are, uh, those are the amounts of uh, power outages that have been reported at this time. So as we take a look at, uh, through time here, we're just gonna kind of show you, look at this red area. This is where we're kind of expecting. What is this area? Well, this would be the eye of the hurricane coming through here. And so that's actually going to be or right in front of it you can see where there's no red that's the actual eye but i'm going to back this up again right in front of it that northeast quadrant that we always talk about the dirty side that nasty side uh, it's going to leave a trail okay you could probably just draw a big you know red crayon through where the eye is going because this is the area that we're going to start seeing some intense power outages right through the state as it rips up towards orlando uh, so here we are again and then uh, even even look at the orange areas in Sarasota as the eye moves. You're still uh, getting those tail bands as well. So let's go ahead. And I want to go ahead and move to the next graphic here. And just to give you an idea here, this is the satellite enhanced pictures. And you can see, you know, we earlier, days ago, we saw that really strong eye. This is a pretty ragged, pathetic kind of looking eye right now. It's not really organized. And, and we like to see that. We like to see that. But you can see ahead of it, too. Uh, just as we uh, look ahead, you can see this area, too, some intensity out here. All right. So again, we're not out of it. This is out in the Atlantic Ocean pushing out, but this is going to be going up into uh, probably the Orlando area and, and affecting them probably as a category one. It has weakened, but it looks very disorganized and we certainly uh, like to see that. So again, another look at the Titan radar here. And again, a lot of dry air to the south of us, but really intense conditions moving through St. Petersburg and Tampa right now. A lot of power outages out there. All right. We're going to throw things back now to Stephanie and Rob. All right. Thank you, Leslie. We appreciate that. And we are on the countdown. Cautiously now. optimistic. That's yes. what I want to keep saying through this. Yes. But I, I, it's still so early, so premature, because there are still so many hours ahead of this. And we know how yes. quickly things can change. We are uh, on the countdown to the governor. We are expecting him to speak in about five minutes. So we will uh, get that camera up and ready. And we'll be keeping our eye on that and go to him as soon as he takes the podium. But meanwhile, we want to take a look at this picture, and this is just north of the, of, uh, this is 275 northbound, and this is just north of the Dick Meisner Bridge. Uh, this is uh, up in the Tampa area, Hillsborough County, and um, yeah, you can see it's very dark there. You can see that camera shaking, so they are definitely getting the effects of this in Tampa as well. It's hopping around there, but the good thing, folks are off the roadway. Yeah. The governor as early as Sunday talking about uh, the anticipation of so many power outages, what he will actually address at this early hour of this storm. We don't know as of right now, but obviously something important enough for him to take to the Pope in the state capitol. So he knew that this was going to be an epic storm with a lot of outages and really stressing at least Sunday into Monday how important it was for people to get out of their homes and get to higher ground. And he really made it a priority to let folks know, you know, if you were leery to leave your home in anticipation of this storm, he would do everything in his power to get local officials on the ball to help folks get back into their homes. So he didn't want folks to worry that, you know, once they left, maybe they wouldn't be able to get back in because of no power or no uh, basic utility services. And so hopefully Hopefully, we're hoping through all this learning process with this storm, because no two storms are the same, that in fact people heeded those warnings. Yeah, and one of the things that uh, the state did that a lot of people applauded was uh, a 
allowing family members to go into state-run nursing facilities mm -hmm. to hunker down with their loved ones, with their aging parents, grandparents, um, and of course the ones that were safe that were out of the storm of the, you know, the, the path of the storm. But a lot of people applauded that because people didn't want to leave their loved ones in, in the nursing homes and they couldn't get them out. And so there were families that went to go hunker down with their loved ones in the nursing homes. Our producer's just telling us now, now, as again this condition changes all throughout the night as it will we do have some reports of flooding in manatee county we're talking us 41 obviously a massive stretch we've all traveled it before uh, but with so many twists and turns in this we do know at least some initial reports of flooding there and that's why it's so imperative at nearly the eight o'clock hour that you obviously should not be on the roads because if nothing else you will have diminished visibility from anything at this point all bets are really off yeah, absolutely. And, and for the most part, with a few exceptions, we've seen people heeding the warnings. It's been really comforting to know that when we do go to those live cam shots of the different bridges and the different roadways, that they are essentially empty. Right. And that's what we want to see because we don't want people swept up in that type of flooding. And it doesn't take much, Rob. You can, people, you know, they say never go through a flooded roadway. You can start to drive through that roadway and it doesn't take much for your tires to lose traction and get swept away. We've seen that so many times over the years and we hate to see that. So, um, you know, if you are near US 41 in Manatee, obviously no one should be on the roads, but be, be mindful of that flooding. Keep your eyes out for any flooded roadways, even post storm until that water has receded completely. Um, and if if not the water, the winds, where we are at, if you're just joining us in our new temporary digs here in Lakewood Ranch, it's really windy out there right now. We've got bays of windows around us in this uh, beautiful facility that we happen to be temporarily housed in, but the winds are howling at this point. I can see the yeah. trees kind of whipping around out there, so I feel like we went through at least about 20, 25 minutes ago. One of the rain bands, that tapered off. I thought we were good to go. And now, boy, the winds are really keeping up. Keeping this up. thing is is very fluid. It's going to yeah. change now, the next 10 minutes, the next 10 hours. Uh, we really don't know what's ahead. So you got to keep your eyes and ears and then really listen to what's going on. We love it when you get a moment, a chance to safely share pictures and videos with us. This isn't the time to do it. Don't do it now. Uh, but when it is safe tomorrow when you feel that that is an easy time to do it then do it but obviously no picture no image nothing is worth you or your family's yeah. safety and you know I want to go back to the wind and one of the things that the wind can cause of course are those power outages mm -hmm. so I'm wondering if uh, we can go back and put up that graphic of the power outages that we're seeing across the state because we last checked it was over 300 thousand power outages uh, which is quite significant and and uh, you know those crews are going to have their work cut out for them and those numbers jump so yeah. fast. Again, but that's when we believe that at least the first part of the eye wall started to make contact with land. And so right now, as we're looking at right just that's, before 730. That was earlier. That was. Uh, well, that's FPL only. That's, that's not counting the entire statewide. So that's. Yeah, we're looking at almost 69,000 power yeah. outages. That's across the state. Uh, with the winds here. Just my power and light. Right. With the winds gusting up as they are here, at least at Lakewood Ranch, I would have to believe that number will grow exponentially. Uh, the night. Yeah, absolutely. And you can hear uh, people here behind us. Uh, everybody is hunkering down. And it's been, you know, people have been in here for hours. People tend to get a little... I don't know, stir crazy sometimes. So if you hear, uh, you know, some noise behind us, just know that everybody is just trying to cope it the best they can. And our team has been phenomenal. They've been taking care of us. And we really, really appreciate our entire team. And we would not be able to do this without our team here to serve you, the public. So uh, you may hear some people behind us. And, you know, everybody's got to blow off steam because not, it's a high-pressure situation. Yeah, the picture, we're in, like, a huge conference room here, right? So we're becoming friends with folks we never would close friends with so that's what it is that's what it takes to get the job done 
North Biscayne Drive in Northport. We've got some viewer video. Take a look. Oh, wow. Look at the ponding. This is obviously from daylight hours, so we're assuming late afternoon, maybe very early evening. Look at the roadway completely covered. Obviously, these areas completely soaked from still the effects of Helene just two weeks ago. Uh, the waters, the ponds, the streams at maximum level as it is really didn't take a much uh, in South County to kind of push these things over yeah. the edge. And there is the effect. You see it right there yourself. Yeah. And, you you know, you talked about Hurricane Helene. It is worth mentioning. Uh, it was it was good to hear uh, the one of the officials, I believe, was in Bradenton, uh, where they said that they cleared the majority of the debris right. uh, that was, you know, from the flooding. Uh, so I'm curious. I'll be curious to see what those neighborhoods look like that were not able to get all of that debris in some of those hardest hit areas, because we did see some significant winds. We oh, saw absolutely. both onshore and offshore. So... Okay. Uh, we understand that Governor DeSantis is giving us an update live. Let's go to him now and listen in. Winds of 120 mile per hour. It's moving toward the northeast at 17 mile per hour, and it will continue to move across central Florida throughout the night and into the early morning hours. Uh, we have seen a weakening of the storm over the last 24 hours. Uh, we also saw it sped up, which means it's hitting the Gulf Coast uh, prior to high tide, which we hope will help mitigate some of the storm surge. There will be, there isn't, you see it already developing, and there's going to continue to be storm surge both on the, east, on the west coast and eventually on the east coast of Florida. And we're going to see a uh, significant amount of rainfall on the northern part of the storm. There's already been 116 tornado warnings with 19 confirmed touchdowns throughout the state, nine flash flood warnings, and four additional Many, many more to come. Numerous counties have reported tornado damage. Is predicted to be between 5 and 13 feet, depending on where you are on the Gulf Coast of Florida. Uh, as of right now, uh, the peak storm surge looks to be between uh, the Charlotte, Lee County, up to Maria Island, and in, in Manatee County. Prior to landfall, the state completed nearly 2,000 missions. Uh, gen uh, generators were, were sent to shelters. Uh, we have massive amounts of fuel reserves that are staged and ready to go. Millions of ports reopened. Highway Patrol will be standing by to escort fuel trucks to service stations so that people will have access to fuel as they return to their home. station is staged. They have 156 bridge inspectors, which will go to clear the bridges, 402 cut-and-toss personnel, and over 1,000 generators and 350 pieces of heavy equipment and trucks. We have massive amounts of search and rescue equipment and personnel standing by, and we hope that there's not a big need for that, but we're prepared for that, and that's not just our state and local, it's also our National Guard, our State Guard. Uh, we have about 9,000 National Guard personnel between Florida and other states. Uh, we also have Florida Highway Patrol, Fish and Wildlife, Department of Law Enforcement, and of course our Florida State Guard. There was a lot of questions about uh, pre-staging linemen, which is our practice here in Florida, given that you have a lot of linemen working uh, for Hurricane Helene in places like Georgia and North Carolina. I'm happy to report that we have over 50,000 linemen that are in the state of Florida, and as soon as it's safe to do so, they will commence with power restoration. Uh, we're already seeing power outages. Uh, you're going to continue to see a lot more power outages over the course of tonight and into tomorrow morning. Now, at this point, it's too dangerous to evacuate safely, uh, so you have to shelter in place and just hunker down. Category 3 storm for most places in Florida, particularly newer construction, uh, likely the, the building is going to be able to, to withstand it. But if you start to get in a situation where trees are snapping, power's popping, uh, you do have to treat it like a tornado. And then if you are in a tornado, cover in a place that's safe uh, in your structure. Those can be very, very dangerous inside and cover. Uh, stay inside and stay off the roads. Flood waters and rushing storm surge are very dangerous, and I would say that's even more so in spite of 
local communities hit by Helene remove a lot of debris, and they did move a lot of debris over the last 72 hours. Um, you're going to have new debris created, and you still have some of that old debris in some of those places. So there's going to be hazards in the storm surge and in the flood waters. Stay put until the storm is passed. If you are in Sarasota, Manatee, some of those areas where the eye of the storm is going, it may be where things calm down for a minute. Uh, just understand that means you're in the eye. It's going to go back and get really nasty very soon. So don't go outdoors until it is confirmed safe. You can listen to your local about that one. Power outages uh, are going to happen, as I mentioned. Uh, so please, if you're using a generator, Make sure that you're using it safely. Do not run the generator inside your home. Uh, that can be fatal. Make sure it's outside the home at a safe distance from windows and doorways. If you see dangerous conditions, please report to your local if they can help protect people and mitigate it. So the storm is time for everybody to hunker down. I know we've got massive amounts of resources that have been prepared for this storm. People are tired because of having to deal with Hurricane Helene, and yet all I've seen is people just dig deep inside and say we're not going to be denied, we're going to get the job done. So I really appreciate everybody that's worked so hard on the heels of Helene to prepare for this storm and to be ready to go, and you will see that in action very shortly as this storm passes. Okay, Kevin Guthrie. Thank you, Governor, for leading us through this. Appreciate your support. Conditions across the state continue to deteriorate as Hurricane Michael, I'm sorry, Hurricane Milton approaches landfall on Florida. No more Michael. No, sir. No, sir. As Hurricane Milton approaches landfall on Florida's west coast, many areas already are already experiencing life-threatening storm surge or life-threatening tornadoes. Please make sure when a tornado warning comes in, uh, especially on our east coast of Florida, we have we have certainly had a lot of tornadic activity over there uh, with uh, confirmed, uh, confirmed radar signature, uh, confirmed tornadoes. Uh, we do have Virginia Task Force 1, uh, Ohio Task Force 1, and Miami. Those uh, structural collapses that have happened, we're receiving somewhere in the neighborhood. This is really, really rough numbers right now, but about a uh, homes that have been destroyed, most of them mobile homes and senior communities. So we're trying to get into uh, uh, Florida's most vulnerable to make sure we're, they're taken care of. If you have not already left, as I just said, inside, stay safe and stay put. Make sure that you're getting to a central area of your home, that you're getting as low as you possibly can. That is, if you have a single-story residence um, and no storm surge, you want to get as low as you possibly can. I had this question asked to me earlier. Do I go to the bottom of the house if I got storm surge? The answer is no. If you've got two floors, you need to go to the lowest part of the second floor to escape the storm surge. Please do not. If you have storm surge come in, please just do not go to the lowest level of your home. Do not attempt to leave your home or drive during the storm. Roads may be flooded, blocked by debris, or have down power lines. If you heard, as the governor said, if you heard trees snapping, that means that there is going to be flying debris. You should seek shelter immediately and treat it as if it's a tornado. Protect yourself from flying debris by putting household items such as pillows, having coats, blankets on top of you. There may be a point where you can storm the motor. If it goes from absolutely nothing,
a dangerous condition, please report them to your local authorities utilizing your 911 lines or non emergency lines. If residents need any information, can continue to call our state assistance information line, which will be working for most likely weeks. That number is 1 800 342 3557. That's 1 800 342 3557. Please follow the agency on X and Instagram at FLSERT. We want to bring it back here to Lakewood Ranch. You just heard from Governor Ron DeSantis, as well as emergency operations officials who are monitoring Hurricane Milton in Tallahassee at the moment. Yeah, a lot of damage still. He's saying uh, 125 homes that we know of completely destroyed, uh, primarily mobile homes, manufactured homes. Uh, again, a lot of new debris out there, according to the governor, as anticipated. That will, we know. Message quite clear. Stay put. Stay where you're at. We're certainly not out of the woods yet. Five to 13 feet surge. Specifically mentioned Charlotte, Lee, and really taking the brunt of a lot of this right now. But if uh, the yeah. evening goes on, we know that's only going to continue. Yeah. Uh, he also talked about the tornado warnings. This right. is something that's incredible. He said there were 116 tornado warnings, and I believe 19 confirmed touchdowns. Oh. 19. That is an incredible amount of tornadoes associated with Hurricane Milton. He, something that's going to happen yeah. during when yeah. he's right. That's the last the thing. But it is. It's, And we're seeing that to our friends and family of the South, Lee, call your counties. Mm -hmm. You're under the gun with that. And that's been that way since this afternoon. Yeah. Um, he also mentioned that the ports are closed, mm -hmm. but uh, they will be reopening as soon as it is safe to do so. Uh, and again, uh, as, you, as you stated, he is telling people to stay home, stay put until the storm has passed. Um, he also uh, talked about, or we talked about earlier, that flash flood warning for Mar uh, Manatee and Sarasota counties. Um, and then the 125 homes destroyed. He didn't specify, officials did not specify exactly where those homes are located. But, you know, we can assume that uh, there will be some homes which are damaged and destroyed, particularly mobile home right. parks, communities that are on the water. Uh, and where this eye wall came ashore uh, much earlier than anticipated in that break. Uh, in our corridor here. So, um, you know, we're going to be mindful of that because it's going to be a difficult day when people go back to their homes that were caught up in this storm, in this hurricane. And uh, it's going to be a sad time for a lot of people. 50,000 linemen we know will be dispatched, according to the governor, to restore literally the hundreds of thousands of folks that will be without power not only tonight, but probably a couple of days, maybe even longer, as we kind of ride out this storm together. He is. Uh, we've been talking about it all day, all afternoon. If you tried to fuel up today, probably wasn't the best of days to try to do that. A lot of pumps wrapped. A lot of those stations shut down. I saw a couple last night in Sarasota already had the closed signs out. He said that there will be, uh, when it is safe to get those tractor trailers back on the interstate, get those big rigs out there with the fuel trucks, they will be dispatched immediately. So we do hope, we certainly hope that you fueled up and got everything that you needed as far as uh, for power, because it may be a little time, a little wait till we get all those stations, all those refineries back online. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to need a lot of patience. We're all going to need a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I want to pivot to is, you know, we've had our few technical glitch glitches, and we want to, you know, thank you for your patience with that. If for some reason um, your your TV goes out, your TV goes out, you're done. not if able to see us be done on, on these TV, ports, you can yeah. watch to say us like, oh, it's going to be weeks. If you have internet private. access, watch us at mysuncoast.com. We are streaming digitally. You can also join us uh, on the radio. But we want to go back now to the governor because I believe that we uh, have him back on the feed and let's let's go back to Tallahassee about some of the things uh, that we're looking for you know for example with this debris um, let local governments do the debris a little bit differently so that we incentivize people to come and do it quickly because the way it goes now there wasn't it was hard to even get people to do their debris you had them going other ways it just didn't make economic sense for doing that and a lot of the debris takes like six months to do and that's just kind of been the standard i think we showed by surging our resources which is really unprecedented you know we knocked out a lot of debris in like 72 hours so we want to have a debris where there's incentives to do it and do it quickly um like i don't want to have to you know, we even talk about this now, but we're not out of hurricane season. 
there is the possibility of another storm brewing, and it's going to come into the Gulf. It's possible. I hope it doesn't happen. But so uh, we want to be able to, to, to have them with contractors and have them have things working with the FEMA reimbursements that make sense. And I, and I think, Kevin, yeah, I think the, I think Administrator Criswell has been very receptive to that because it does. It just makes sense. In terms of the timeline of, of, of recovery, and last time with Lee you were able to get search and rescue units kind of out there before, if I remember correctly, before the sun came out. That will happen again. Yes. So, yeah, they will do in the dark. That is totally, absolutely fine. Um, it's just a question of making sure that it's safe for them to go out. So as soon as that storm passes, and the fact that it came in earlier than thought, that's good for the high tide because the high tide's not here yet. I think it'll help with the surge. Uh, but it's going to mean pretty much all the rescues are going to be done in the dark in the middle of the night. But that's fine. They're going to do that. All of our folks are doing that, and they, they will be on target. Since you have so many people here in the state, more than previous storms, um, are you expecting things to kind of be restored quicker than previous storms? Like Helene was power back within a week. Are we expecting that even sooner than three days? Well, we need to figure out how much power is out. I mean, we just don't know, right? And so, uh, so we'll see. But uh, I thought you know, we didn't get hit with Dorian, but it was coming, so we prepared. I thought maybe we had reached 50 with Dorian. We didn't. Uh, we reached in the 40s. We did 40,000 for Ian in the 40s. This is the first time we've crossed 50, and so I think that that's good. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that are that are excited about being going to work. I know Floridians really appreciate these guys when they get out there. And if you look, the fact that it's going Sarasota across – uh, that's heavy Florida power and light territory. You know, those guys are a well-oiled machine at this. Um, they do a really good job. A lot of their infrastructure handles the storms very well. And so a lot of times when you're talking about power restoration, if you have the people there and you go quick, you can potentially reconnect relatively quickly. If the whole thing is blown out where you have to rebuild it, it takes longer. My sense is, is that um, if it's a lot of FPL stuff, their, their infrastructure probably can be able to weather a lot of this. So they'll have to do some reconnects, but maybe not a full rebuild. Fort Myers Beach for Hurricane Ian was uh, FPL. And, and they honestly, they could have gotten the power back on very quickly. It was too dangerous to hook it up because of the homes with the storm surge. But, but their, their uh, substations actually did pretty good. So I, so I think it remains to be seen with that. Now, in terms of the search and rescue personnel, I'd like nothing better than to be here tomorrow night telling you we're sending all, all of it back to the states. I would love that to say, you know what, um, you know, we did whatever we needed to do, just like Helene, and then 12, 24 hours later, it was fine. Thank you, and you guys go back home. We would love to do that. I'm, I'm hoping that we're not going to need them to be long, but it's just going to depend on, on what the damage is. So uh, we'll see. I mean, look, these storms, it's like how many um, – what population, how many people, how much infrastructure, and this thing has come up. It's, it kind of went east into Sarasota County. I don't know where they're going to say the landfall was, maybe Venice from what I'm looking on the radar, maybe middle Sarasota County. But uh, if, it, if it cuts across from there, there's a lot of rural areas, whereas if it would have gone into Tampa Bay and rode up I-4, that's like – millions and millions of people. Um, I do think north of the storm, there's a lot of, of precipitation. I think you're going to see inland flooding in uh, central Florida, north central Florida. I think you're going to see storm surge in northeast Florida, places like Daytona Beach, Flagler Beach, uh, St. John's County. I think you will see that coming on the backside of the storm. So, so we'll see how all that shakes out. But bottom line is we have the resources amassed. We'll use all that we need. But, yes, I hope I can just send a bunch of them home uh, to say, you know, we got the job done. Uh, the street posted a video earlier today of a dog chained uh, to a fence. Uh, they went for us. Do you know what's happening with that dog? I mean, first of all, what kind of an animal would just leave a dog chained to a pole in the middle of a hurricane? Uh, I mean, it's just unbelievable that somebody would do that. And so I'm thankful for the FHP folks out of Tampa for rescuing the dog. They did bring it to the vet. The, the dog has a clean bill of health. Um, and who knows, maybe we'll do some adoption, put the dog up for adoption, and we can have some people in Florida come and, and, and compete for it and, and take it. But, um, you know, it's just like, I mean, people do a lot of dumb things, but you just see that. 
And so I hope they find the person who did it. And that person should have the book thrown at him. We've got very good laws in Florida against animal cruelty. Uh, you know, these uh, these dogs, we've got dogs that are going to be helping in the storm. These these mil these police working dogs, they're they're great. They're great canines. So um, we don't have tolerance for that in Florida. Um, I just I thought it was outrageous uh, that somebody would do that. Can you talk about the size of the storm and what people should expect from the wind fields, how wide the eye is? or anything like that as it comes on the shore? So it's interesting. Um, I think the storm did deteriorate because of the wind shear. I mean, we were here, what, 24 hours ago, and it was 180 miles an hour. Um, and we didn't. no one thought it was going to come ashore at that. But I think a lot of people thought it was going to come ashore as a pretty strong four. And it ended up coming as basically a mid-level three. Now, it doesn't mean there's not storm surge. It doesn't mean there's not hazards. There is. It's a serious, serious storm. But um, in terms of some of the damage that we're going to see from wind, uh, there just is a big difference between 140, 150, and 120. Um, we saw it with Hurricane Ian, which was basically a Category 5. I think it may have landed just a tick below. Of course, we saw it with Hurricane Michael, which was a Category 5. As you get into the 120 range, 115 range, um, still, still hazardous, can still do a lot of damage. But Florida buildings in particular, new ones, they're going to be able to withstand that uh, for sure. And so, so I think that that likely, look, I'm cautiously optimistic that with the Florida building code that, that you can do. Now, the storm surge is a different story, and we've had storms that, you know, Hurricane Michael was not necessarily known for being massive storm surge, even though it was like a tornado and it obliterated so many structures. And then there have been other storms that have been Cat 3 that produced massive storm surge. So I think it's too early to tell on that, but I think the fact that whether it was the shear or what whatever happened, the fact that it did weaken before it made landfall is going to be a uh, benefit to us compared to what we were looking at 24 hours ago. But be regardless of the, the, the winds from the storm directly, we've already seen probably more tornado watches than I've ever seen. I was talking to people, do you ever remember? No one remembers ever seeing this many tornado warnings that have been done. So that spun off a lot of tornadoes. And you have them. It's not like, yeah, there was Fort Myers, but there was Palm Beach. There was, uh, there was Port St. Lucie. I mean, it was all over the state. Uh, so, so that is a hazard for sure. And uh, I think we're likely to continue to see those throughout tonight. About the incentives for to, to re remove aquarius to get more of them coming in here. So, as the, gov Rick, as the governor said, um, he and I had a conversation today with Deanne Criswell. Um, she's actually coming in here tonight at some point in time when weather permits uh, to, to uh, be with us uh, tomorrow. But um, I will say, she, she said that we were. On the right track, she felt like that was a very good idea to, to get some type of incentive for individuals to come here. Um, maybe, uh, again, incentivizing people from maybe west of the Mississippi, west of the Ohio River, so we're not competing against people that are in North Carolina. But, again, we, we talked about some, uh, some potential opportunities there, um, and she was going to get her um, – some of her senior directors to come in, and one of them, uh, Robert Pesapane, is who is actually over that entire program, is actually traveling from D.C. tonight as well to actually sit down and have a conversation with us, so that we could all get to a, a situation where we think the best move forward, is, you know, we can take that best move forward. However, as the governor also alluded to, there's a, a I think a parallel path, and you know that we. We don't do bureaucracy. We don't go in linear paths. We don't throw all of our eggs in one basket. We are talking about uh, reaching out for uh, emergency management uh, assistance compact, EMAC, or mutual aid uh, through other states to start bringing in some other DOT-like, uh, public works-like uh, individuals to help us with mutual aid to, again, we don't know what might happen in the next 10 to 15 days. We want to get some of this debris picked up again. We want to get – we've shown how government sometimes, unfortunately, um, usually private sector is better than us, but we were, we've shown them that we can get this stuff done and we can get it done quickly if we cut through the bureaucracy. So we're going to look at the incentive-ish program, and we're going to also look at bringing in uh, mutual aid from other states. Well, I mean, and, you know, the thing is, is there could be another storm this season, but the debris – I mean, this you did the standard practice with this debris, the way it works, is it takes months and months to do debris. I mean, like, you know, I remember Michael, how long it took to do the debris. Ian, there was debris. I mean, like, 
And a lot of it is like, you know, the local governments are like, you know, worried what FEMA is going to reimburse and this and that. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know, the incentive should be to get it done as quickly as possible. Um, and, you know, it's a difficult situation because you have like Mexico Beach after Hurricane Michael. They had 90 million dollars of debris cleanup. And I think their annual budget was like five million dollars. So it, they, they obviously need that that reimbursement. And I think they got 100 percent. Oh, yeah, they did, because I went and got it from President Trump, 100 percent of reimbursement for like the first 45 days. But to have the debris for, for six months, a year, more than that. Um, and I would never think that we would be able to say that government would do better than private but when I we took all our trucks, they're all over the state doing all this stuff at the normal course of business. And we said, OK, this is a hazard. Let's do emergency 24 seven. And they were going and they picked up three thousand plus loads of debris on Anna Maria Island, on Madeira Beach, all these places, and then brought them to this landfill. As I said, this is a local responsibility. I don't think the state can be in the business of cleaning up everybody's debris. We, first of all, we just are too big of a state. I mean, there's no way a state, state government can do that. Um, so this was kind of an extraordinary circumstance. But we also have to look at why is this never, why is this always a problem? And uh, I think what Kevin is doing, I think, is smart. Uh, I think the administrator will work constructively with him, and I think we'll probably get, get somewhere that's going to be more efficient and more effective. Governor, although that has bureaucracy, you
Hang on the monitor, but the monitor's got to probably get started, too. Hey, uh, we're going to be looking at Tampa. I-4. I okay. we got to wait for the monitor now. Oh, hey, hey, you can take the graphic if you can. If you see it, when I call for it, you take it. When I call for it, you take it, all right? On the air? And welcome back, Rob Wells, along with Stephanie Stanton and Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. We did lose power, as to be expected. Uh, many of you probably have had power going in and out all throughout the evening, but we were listening to Governor DeSantis as well as Kevin Guthrie from the Emergency Management Association in uh, Tallahassee, kind of giving us an update at this hour, the 8 o'clock update. And he was saying about, uh, obviously, there's uh, a lot of cleanup to do. Debris pickup will be continuing. That's a priority. He's been saying that since Sunday. FPL, a well-oiled machine. We know that resources will be dispatched when the time is safe to do so. Tornadoes he talked about earlier, uh, one that we had heard of in Charlotte County, uh, and again, the storm surge. But uh, just uh, all hands on deck, stay where you are. Uh, but we're glad you're back with us, and we have an update with Bob. Yeah, you guys, you know, they come out every hour now, right, on the top of the hour. Eight o'clock advisory has come in, and as we heard from the governor, it's near Venice. It certainly is. It's uh, southwest, uh, basically, of Sarasota. Here are the latest coordinates on it and the latest pressure. The pressure is going back up. Notice the winds, 120. That is a low Category 3 hurricane. So it's going to be officially making landfall within the next hour. If you figure it out, it's west-southwest of Sarasota. It's moving to the east-northeast at 15. So you would expect it to make landfall into Sarasota within about an hour and 15 minutes. So in, in an hour and 15 minutes, the center of the eye will have made landfall, I think. Uh, that's a lot earlier. Uh, that's simply because it's made it further south, too. And if you look at that three, that's the center, right? So anywhere near that center, and I'm, I'm talking up to near Braden, but more so Sarasota and southward is where the storm surge is going to have an is going to have an impact. Uh, so it's not going to be the catastrophic storm surge in Tampa. Good news for Anna Maria Island, obviously. Uh, they'll still get a surge up because we're going to get west winds on the back side of this as it moves toward Orlando. Those winds are still going to feed into this system. And get this, it's not over, even though it makes landfall. We just had a recent wind gust at the Sarasota Brayton Airport of 96 miles an hour. Wow. And of all the time I've been here, I can tell you this, that that's the, one of the highest gusts I've seen at the Sarasota Brayton Airport, 96 mm -hmm. miles an hour. And again, you can see what's happening right there in the storm is going to move off toward Orlando and then eventually uh, move off toward the East Coast Cape Canaveral uh, in this in this point. So, again, it looks like it's going to make landfall within the next hour and 15 minutes. Okay, and Bob, for the, for the lay people, we were a little confused because uh, Leslie was earlier reporting that the eye wall was making land right. and that the storm appeared to be sort of breaking up a little All bit. All the land disrupts it, right? Okay, so is that is that what happened? And then you can see it still moving to the northeasterly direction. Right. Our friends to the north, are, are they really Relief at this well, summer? they shouldn't be. Uh, they're breathing a sigh of relief because it's not going to be the catastrophic flooding as a result of storm surge. It could have happened in Tampa. I don't know if you guys saw the article, but I, I certainly did. They did research. If that storm would have been a little further north into St. Petersburg and it maintained its organization, it would have been $130 billion worth of damage. They estimated it to be $130 billion. At this case, not even close to that. But there is going to be damage. It's going to be a lot. We're still going to get this onshore flow, and as we heard the governor talk about, the debris that's still out there right. uh, is still blowing, and the west winds aren't going to give up for a while. And we may have seen the strongest winds, uh, and i got to tell you, places south of Sarasota are not going to get that 96-mile-hour wind gust. To the north, Pinellas, St. Petersburg, Hillsborough County, uh, they're all going to still see some very strong winds. There's a high wind warning there hmm. all up and down those counties, even from Manatee County northward. But the good news, and, you know, you have to look at the good news, you know, and get through these kind of storms. And I can tell you, I'm relieved. Uh, you know, we were thinking 120, gusts up to 155. 
That's not going to happen, but we're still in danger. Think about it. 96 mile an hour wind gusts uh, reported within the last hour at the Sarasota Braden Airport. So, uh, just a quick update. We'll have some graphics. We'll show you that and kind of go over some other things coming up in just a little bit. But it's not over yet. Winds turn to the west and southwest as the storm center moves off to the northeast. And then we'll begin to see uh, even more waves piling up on the coastline. So, uh, we'll keep an eye on it, of yeah. course, and I'll be heading out over there to the graphics and showing you that. Um, in fact, uh, uh, right now, in fact, if I can, if I can do that, uh, the, um, again, the system itself is uh, poorly organized. It really got beat up uh, by that dry air and by uh, some strong wind shear that we've been talking about. But the strong wind shear has been the big factor uh, with this storm. Uh, we are looking at again the storm taking off to the northeast. Uh, gusts up to 150 miles an hour, and uh, we are looking at the potential. Anyway, let me uh, have Leslie move the maps now, if you can. I don't know if we can switch it over to the other Mac system, if it's possible. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, again, there's uh, 2 o'clock in the morning on 90-mile-hour winds, and there is, an, um, again, a pretty good storm system right there in the central Florida. This is what saved us a lot of part of it. Now, I'm, I'm not saying say, it saved us from the catastrophic event. We're still going to have a lot of damage. We're dealing with a Category 3 hurricane. But this dry air and this trough of low pressure that drove the storm and is driving it continually off to the northeast is feeding into the center. And when that happens, it disrupts it fl its flow. Also, we have high wind shear going over the northern portion of the Gulf of Mexico. That just blows the storms off toward the east, and that, too, is disrupting it. All right, now, again, we're not going to get to that one. We're going to go to this one here. You can see the eye, I believe, is going to make landfall in the next, as I said, hour, five minutes. It'll be um, momentarily. And once the storm goes over land, it really starts to weaken even more so. Uh, it loses the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. See these reds that you're seeing right there across parts of Anna Marie Island? Anna Marie Island is getting some strong winds. I wouldn't be surprised to see wind gusts coming out of Anna Maria up to 80, 90 miles an hour. They are in the left quadrant of the eye wall, and that is the most significant uh, uh, returns that I'm seeing, indicating that those winds are probably up to 90, uh, maybe even 100 miles an hour right there at Anna Marie Island, stretching off toward northwest Bradenton and into uh, Terracea, Palmetto, um, not quite into Rabonia yet, but pretty close to it, right near the Sunshine Skyway. Uh, those winds are more than likely gusting up to nearly 100 miles an hour at this point. Notice the rainfall down here? There isn't any, and there's not going to be. That dry air I mentioned has fed into the storm. We'll still see those winds. Those winds are already starting to switch out of the west here uh, at Boca Grande, also near Rotunda uh, and Placida, up to Minnesota Beach, Northport. You're more than likely getting winds out of the west-southwest at this juncture, and they're still pretty strong despite the fact there's no rain around. And I've seen this happen before where there's no rain, but, boy, the wind is just feeding into the center of that low pressure as uh, the pressure is starting to come up. And there's what I mean by those uh, big winds right there near Anna Maria Island uh, stretching off toward northwest Bradenton. They're getting some uh, big winds, and there's the storm. It looks more like it's moving east, but uh, they're suggesting an east a northeast movement uh, pretty quickly, too, at around 19 miles an hour and soon to make landfall as it pushes off to the east. Now, you see the area in bright green. Uh, there's a high wind warning, uh, an extreme wind warning from Manatee County northward through Hillsborough and Pinellas County, not included Sarasota, not included uh, Charlotte County at this point. And uh, once again, the storm surge, at least this graphic tells the real story of what's been happening. We are looking at less of an issue of storm surge on Anna Marie Island. I know a lot of folks out there are really happy about that. They're not too happy about having to evacuate after they've done all that cleaning, but I think you're going to be able to come home uh, to uh, the homes that you've been working on trying to get fixed. I think you're going to be able to come home and uh, not have as much damage as you might have thought. So even though the models were off a little bit, right, I mean, off a lot, but uh, when it comes to all these variables in October, you got cold fronts coming down, you got troughs coming down. That doesn't happen in the summer. So projecting where the storm is going to go is a lot easier during the summer because you don't have all these other pressure patterns. This is the change of seasons in October. So you have cold fronts coming down, you have low pressure troughs coming down. On top of that, you have a, a symphony of pressure patterns that really dictate where these storms go. And in this case, it looks like uh, this is uh, going to be a much better scenario for us. We're still going to have a lot of damage, 
uh, power outages, trees down. We're hearing that trees have been down. Already six inches of rainfall reported in uh, West Bradenton uh, by a spotter there. And from this graphic, and I'll step aside here just a little bit to show you, greater than three feet. So still that storm surge is possible, uh, three to five feet in Anna Maria. But at one point, just uh, 24 hours ago, it was showing red, meaning greater than nine feet. So that has improved. Still flooding possible near Cortez. And this is a, a long, long-lasting onshore flow. So for the next several hours at least, you're going to see this west to southwest wind, which will continue to pump the water into the bay, into the barrier islands, and all the way down uh, onto Siesta Keys. Still, I mean, we're talking manageable, right, just above three foot of uh, standing water on Siesta Key. But it doesn't look like it's going to rival what we saw with um, Helene as it went by. But still a problem. Don't get me wrong. I'm just I'm looking at the optimistic side of this event, uh, indicating that at one point we were greater than nine feet in a lot of these places here into Charlotte Harbor. And that's what I said. This product, one out of ten chance of happening, the National Hurricane Center, the National Weather Service, and NOAA make that graphic, and it's experimental. And what they say is that they always err on the high side. And that's certainly what they've done with this graphic. Now, one last look here. Get back to the news desk. Things are going to improve as we move through Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Time for cleanup across our area. We'll have much more on mysuncoast.com, on your ABC7 First Alert weather app. Uh, recapping once again, the center of Milton is about 20 miles. Now it's probably about 15 miles west, south, I should say southwest of uh, Sarasota, Florida, moving to the northeast at around 19 miles an hour off in that direction. Soon to make landfall, it looks like uh, Karen and Summer. We've got a uh, new anchor team in now, and uh, we've got other news that is breaking. Uh, we're going to send it back to the anchor desk. Okay, Bob. Yeah, we're getting near. And right now, uh, Summer, we want to bring in Stacy Alonzio with the Northport Emergency Management. All right. Thank you for joining us, Stacy. Can you tell us the situation in Northport right now? What do you want the community to know right now? Okay, so right now at the EOC, we are on lockdown. The winds are too strong. We're keeping our doors shut. We're all staying inside. We have pulled all first responders off the roads until those sustained winds are below 45 miles per hour. So I suggest that everybody does the same, stays inside and stays safe until those winds die down. Um, as far as evacuations go, are you happy with the people in Northport who have evacuated? Do you know of people who stayed behind? Of course. I mean, there's, there's always going to be people who stay behind. Uh, we do our best to get that messaging out and let people know of the dangers. Uh, but there was some, I don't have the final numbers from the county, but we had some pretty good attendance at our evacuation centers. As this storm rolls through, uh, we're hearing of damage locally. Have you heard of any damage in the Northport area at this time? I haven't received any reports of any damages yet. That doesn't mean they're not out there. Uh, but we will be out first thing uh, with our damage assessment teams to uh, survey the community and re report any damages. Uh, I don't know if you guys have some windows where you're able to kind of observe what's going on. Here we lost power briefly. Can you kind of describe to us what it looks like where you are? Oh, yeah. There's trees blowing. I see debris flying by. It's, 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 it's picking up speed outside for sure. The wind is. Um, our light poles are wiggling back and forth. We switched over to generator power a little while ago just in case we did lose power to the building, so we're good to go there. But it's definitely getting a little scary outside. And once this storm rolls through, what would you like residents to know? Please stay off the roads until we tell you that it's safe to do so. There's still going to be standing water in places, debris in the roads. If you go to our website, northportfl.com forward slash alerts, we sorry, northportfl.gov forward slash alerts. There is a road closure map, so people can wake up, look at the map, and at least see what roads are closed. And if they absolutely have to go out for an emergency, they'll be able to find their way around. But we recommend waiting until we give the all clear before going outside. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for your update, and hopefully we can continue to check in with you uh, throughout this very long night. Yeah, thank you so much. Stay safe. Thank you.
All right, once again, speaking to Stacy Alazio with the Northport EOC. Uh, they're monitoring the storm like much of the Sun Coast is. Uh, we're being told all emergency services have been suspended throughout the area because of the strong winds right now and the rain and this storm getting ready to make landfall. 911 calls in Manatee County and the other counties being logged and attended to, and emergencies will be attended to as soon as it's safe to do so. Okay. All right. And also, right before uh, we spoke to Stacy, of course, Bob Summer giving us that eight o'clock update. We he said maybe about an hour to an hour fifteen before landfall. The center of the eye, he believes, is coming through Sarasota. Maybe uh, one hundred twenty mile per hour wind. So he says that is a low Cat three, which is of course much better than what we had initially expected. But still very serious. We will expect damage, and we are expecting storm surge. Some other information into our newsroom. Uh, the governor giving a press conference on the situation statewide, again focusing though on our local area specifically where this storm is making landfall shortly. We are being told 125 homes have been destroyed. However, we have been not been we have not been given the information exactly where this is. So we will give you more information and updates as soon as that information comes into our newsroom. And they did say summer is mostly mobile homes yes. that have been damaged. All right. And massive amounts of fuel are now on standby. Uh, the gas stations, numerous gas stations running out of gas as everyone prepared to evacuate, filling up their, gener their gas cans to fill their generators. So we do have massive amounts of fuel on standby. So as soon as it's safe to do so, the governor saying those trucks will be heading into the area to refill the stations. Also, everybody looks for the linemen summer, of course, and Governor DeSantis saying more than 50,000 linemen ready to go in multiple places all along the Gulf Coast. Yes, ma a massive amount of uh, damage expected again and power outages all around the Sun Coast expected as well. And that's a good reminder. We do want to tell our viewers if you lose power, you can still listen to our broadcast. You can go to mysuncoast.com, download the app, the ABC7 My Sun Coast app. We are also broadcasting live on the FM radio station, WSRQ Lecom Radio. Again, WSRQ Lecom Radio. And we're doing this in an effort to make sure we are able to keep our community members informed. Yeah, and Summer, of course, you and I have both, our phones have been blowing up with people sending us video. The best way to do it for you is to go onto our website, mysuncoast.com. There's going to be a share it tab. And from there, we're going to ask you to upload that video also just tell us where you are and of course we want you to do it very safely so I mean if you've got impact glass windows maybe from behind there or something like that and a good message when we were speaking to Northport's EOC even though the storm is rolling through now the damage is, is being done. You are being asked to stay indoors, though. Do not go out at this time, or once you feel like it's safe, there could be some more storms rolling through the area, high winds still, the storm surge. So it is advised that you do not head out until emergency crews can get out, assess the area, and make sure it is safe for you to return to your property. Yeah, we've been hearing that 45 mile per hour, you know, sustained wind. That's been a key number where they're saying emergency crews just cannot go out if the winds are even just 45 miles per hour. Also, you know, in places like Longbow Key, the fire chief telling us, regardless of the wind, it's the high flood waters, and they can't go out until those waters go back down. That's right. And again, this Category 3, Hurricane Milton, expected to make landfall southwest of Sarasota in about an hour, again, as a Category 3, with winds up to 120 miles per hour. Per hour. We are told the Florida Army National Guard 
We'll be responding. Hundreds of soldiers are now on standby in Sarasota and elsewhere, ready to assist with recovery efforts and anything our community needs. All right, here's a look right now on one of our cameras. You're looking at the North Side Skyway Bridge. Take a look at those cars that have been abandoned right on the shoulder, Summer. Oh, it's not safe to be out. The, uh, these are extreme conditions. The winds are strong, especially over there in the Skyway area. Right. This takes, uh, if anyone's not familiar, this takes drivers from Manatee County through Pinell Pinellas County, and uh, it's a long stretch of road there. So uh, you've got the gusts of wind coming in from the water there. Yeah, I mean, it's taking that rain and just kind of lifting it off the ground, and you can see all that shaking it really is frightening to look at. Yeah, a frightening sight because it is a... Real good reminder that you should not be out on the roads right now. That is the Skyway Bridge, but that is the case across the Sun Coast. Very strong gusts of wind happening right now, so it is not good driving conditions. And for hours now, emergency officials have been advising Sun Coast residents and visitors to stay indoors. Stay in place. Do not open your doors. Do not open your windows. There could be objects, projectiles flying, so not a good situation. Yeah, that's right. Okay, we want to now toss it over to Lee Waldman, who's reporting from our Tampa Bay area. So let's take a listen. This is it, folks. Hurricane Milton's outer bands are lashing the Florida Gulf Coast, and it only gets worse from here. It'll keep picking up hour after hour. You will be on your own. Other state officials echoing the same ominous tone. When you figure it out, like, hey, I shouldn't be here. Hey, I need help. And help's not coming. It's going to take us hours, uh, if not days, to be able to come to you. Final calls for preparations and evacuations have now switched to shelter in place and try to stay alive. Make sure you have a life preserver handy. Make sure that you have plenty of um, uh, supplies with you because you may be stuck in your home. Milton's winds are whipping up tornadoes. Florida has already experienced the most tornado warnings in a day on record. One family in Fort Myers. Okay, oh. yeah, we were having some technical difficulties. Only You could only kind of hear the reporter's track, so we're going to try and work on that, and we'll replay that for you. Yes, and we do want to remind everyone we are expecting widespread power outages from Milton. So, again, if you have not done so, download our app, ABC7, My Sun Coast News, and you can listen to us on the radio, FM, SR, WSRQ, LECOM Radio. And remember, some good tips. If your power goes out, you are advised to disconnect connect all electronics. Uh, you'll want to disconnect your TVs, your microwave, etc., to prevent damage. And once the electricity returns, turn on one item at a time. I didn't know that. So that's good advice. So you do not cause anything to blow up. I know. And, you know, so I'm thinking back to that video of the Skyway with the wind. Uh, DeSantis mentioning 19 confirmed tornado touchdowns. A lot of damage. You know, we're still trying to figure out where it was, but I did see video from Fort Myers, which obviously is a very hurting community, and already they had so much damage going across there. Yeah, and devastating to our coastal communities. Helene just came through the area two weeks ago really impacting our barrier islands, Siesta Key, Longboat Key, Anna Maria Island. The debris, you know, you remember it was lined up for several miles all over. Not enough time to get in and clean up that debris. And now, unfortunately, we're expecting this to uh, end up in the water and uh, just not a good situation right now. Yeah, producer, looks like he passed you something. Yes, yeah, Charlotte County reporting. Charlotte County EOC local winds from Hurricane Milton have Reach sustained tropical storm speeds and all residents advised to stay off the roads until we are no longer experiencing hazardous conditions. Uh, you should actually go to a small interior room with no windows and uh, close and lock all windows and exterior doors. Just the uh, normal safety, not normal, but safety advice to keep you and your family members safe. And I believe our producer is telling us we've got some video of flooding in Siesta Key, the midnight pass. And Let's take a look at point. that. There it is right there. We're looking at it. Oh, my goodness. Summer, where's the road? So flooding on Siesta Key, Midnight Pass, this was a similar scene when Helene went through the area, impacting all the businesses in this area. Now they're getting hit for the second time in just two weeks. They did not have the time to even make the repairs and reopen. 
getting hit once again, this is devastating for this area. Right, and Summer, I know you remember this too, this video, because we played it because it was so wild during Helene, that transformer blowing up. Right. And at the time, we had seen cars still driving through. Of course, that is completely not the case in this point. No, and again, the storm surge having a big impact in this area. The water expected to rise anywhere from 8 to 12 feet. The National Weather Service also issuing an extreme wind warning. That is in effect, and that is where the dangerous driving conditions come into play and just being outside in general. Right, and then rain, Bob saying in our particular area, that might not be as big of an issue, maybe 4 to 6, possibly 8 inches, but he is saying that is going to be an issue further north. All right, and as a result of this storm, County officials are asking residents to reduce the use of water, and that is to make sure we are not posing a risk to wastewater systems. So reduce your water usage right now. It just the uh, wastewater systems can only take so much, and the power outages and the rain, of course, causing issues here. Uh, so you want to reduce that if you can right now. And that's even if you have water. Mm -hmm. I mean, many places the city or your government has turned it down, turned it off. Definitely. All right. And again, residents should prepare for power outages if you have not already. Uh, this, this situation just being described, I'm told, as violent wind conditions outside. Residents saying they've never seen these type of windy conditions before. All right. Right now, we want to get to our reporter, Michaela Redman. We believe she's reporting from the Sarasota EOC. So let's see what she has. So what does it look like in the hours after the storm? I spoke to Sarasota County officials who tell me they have multiple plans in order to start assessing, rescuing, and responding to the 911 calls. Fire Chief David Rathbun and Assistant Fire Chief Tim Dorsey telling me the first step is having firefighters quickly assess their own stations, helping provide a snapshot of the infrastructure and possible damage, and making sure it's safe to pull out different pieces of equipment needed post-storm. They are expecting the bridges to the barrier islands to be gone, either destroyed or not structurally sound to drive on, referencing what happened during Hurricane Ian in Fort Myers. But this is something they plan for, incorporating marine units to help with response and assessment. In the county and the fire department, we have boats and we have different pieces of equipment that we've acquired to do just that, just because of what's happened in the past. So we don't want to make those, it's not a mistake, but we just want to be prepared for those challenges that approach us. Dorsey says one thing he really wants to let residents know is to stay home after the storm until it's all clear. He says most times people want to go out and look at the damages, but that only complicates their efforts to get people help. Reporting in Sarasota, Michaela Redmond, ABC 7, your local station. And you know, Karen, we have so many mobile home communities in this area and on the water. Right, and we know that repeatedly from the beginning of this, days ago, over the weekend, the mobile homes and the manufactured homes, they have been told to evacuate. Yeah, hopefully uh, many committed to doing that. Uh, very dangerous conditions, uh, especially with these windy conditions, so folks will be able to get out and see the damage that was done. Hopefully it didn't happen, but uh, we are hearing more than 100 homes, manufactured homes, have been damaged. We do not know the exact location of this. The governor addressing this uh, about an hour ago as the information now comes in. Right, and of course the fire chief and the assistant fire chief that Michaela just brought us to, they believe the bridges to the barrier islands are maybe, possibly, at least partially or completely devastated. And Karen, we spoke to the fire chief from Longboat Key. He was telling us that this is the reason it's the water on the roads that they cannot handle any emergency calls right now. Not because they don't want to, not because they don't want to go out in these elements. It's because they simply do not have access right now to get onto Longboat Key or the islands. Right, and Summer, out of all the phoners we did, that was the one I keep thinking about and I'm kind of haunted about because the chief was telling us 100 to 200 people decided they're not evacuating and some of them are on first floor homes. Yeah, first floor homes, the fire chief telling us they actually went door to door. They have spoke to these residents, went back there again today, and some residents simply refusing to evacuate. It's an unfortunate situation, uh, especially with the storm surge. 
first floor residents, uh, not a good situation there, and we will continue to monitor the situation and bring you updates. As soon as we learn them, the Longboat Key Fire Chief was telling us he does expect fatalities. We have not heard of anything yet, but it is a very dangerous situation going on right now. All right, and Summer, it definitely isn't because they didn't try. We know the men and women went door to door, told them, okay, you don't want to leave because of your pets? We're going to find animal shelters or shelters that will take in your pets. You don't want to leave because you have a medical issue? We're going to get you ambulances. And apparently they still said they wouldn't Go. A different situation, though, on Anna Maria Island. We yeah. spoke to public officials from Anna Maria who said they were pleasantly surprised. Everyone evacuated for the most part. Maybe a handful of people did not. And they do believe Hurricane Helene led to many people just seeing how powerful these storms can be and how much damage they can cause. Uh, that area devastated by Helene and now just a double whammy. Uh, many are worried the homes will not survive. Yeah, and of course, Ted showing us, you know, throughout this whole entire process, just how many uh, bumper to bumper, how many highways were congested. So we do know it was a historic evacuation across our state. Definitely people evacuating, many people riding out the storm. Thankfully, it was not a Category 5. It is coming in as a Category 3, still very strong. And we want to get to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan now with another update. Bob. Yeah, officially from the National Hurricane Center, uh, Milton has made landfall. It has made landfall. The uh, exact location is Siesta Key. Siesta Key is where Milton officially has made landfall from the National Hurricane Center as a Category 3 hurricane uh, just within the last 15 minutes. So once again, letting you know that uh, the storm is now over land, and that means it will continue to weaken. Uh, right there it is. And you can see Siesta Key in the center, dead center of a Category 3 hurricane. Uh, I got to tell you, I looked out the window just a minute ago. Those winds are still coming up, and they're still tropical storm force strength winds sustained. I would say sustained at 50, nearly 60 miles an hour. And we've had a wind gust just within the last hour and a half at 96 miles an hour at the Sarasota Bradian Airport. So once again, I'm, I'm not going to take too much more time. I know you've got more news to talk about, but uh, the storm has made landfall. The exact location and city they are calling Siesta Key, Florida, right here in Sarasota. So Manatee County, once again, has uh, never had a land-falling hurricane. So I guess Mike Modrick's story about the Indian blessing may be holding true for Manatee County. But uh, still a lot of dangers out there. Uh, Leslie Lacey is going to be up here in just a little bit explaining some of those dangers uh, for us. So, uh, Karen and Summer, there you have it, uh, landfall of Milton as it moves across the state now. All right. Thank you, Bob. My heart is breaking for all the residents, visitors of Siesta Key. Obviously, that is a world-known destination. Number one beach many times around the world. Uh, devastated. A beach that was devastated from Helene, by the right. way. Uh, there it is. Milton making landfall, Siesta Key as a Category 3, Bob says. He does expect it to continue to weaken, and it happened much earlier than we thought, Summer. Yeah, it did. Again, glad it was not a Category 5. It did make landfall as a 3. Many residents already displaced because of Helene on Siesta Key. That area also hit hard by Helene was in the recovery process, removing debris, gutting homes, people trying to apply with their insurance companies, with FEMA, trying to get assistance, didn't even have enough time to move forward and do that, and then for another storm to head our way, Milton hitting Siesta Key, and of course, not the only area, although it made landfall at Siesta Key, its presence was felt all around the Sun Coast, and we're going to be able to get a better idea of the damage that we received around the Sun Coast as our viewers contact us, and uh, we're able to get our reporters out there to observe everything. And a good reminder, we, we do appreciate all the video and pictures that come in from our viewers. If you have anything that you can share with us, you can send it to our website, mysuncoast.com. Click on the share it tab, but we do want to remind everyone, do not do this at this moment. We do not want anyone to uh, risk their lives to get that video or pictures to us as soon as it is safe to do so. And you can share what is going on in your community. We would like to share it with our entire uh, community that watches ABC7 so we can share the impact that Milton had on the Sun Coast. Right, and I think it's very important to point out Bob, Leslie, everyone telling us, you know, it's wild, and then if it's all of a sudden very calm, don't think that's the time you want to go True. out because you'll be in the eye then.
Yes, again, the strong gusts continue. Uh, even if it gets quiet for a few minutes, that's why they say you don't want to go out immediately after a storm. You want to take time, stay sheltered, give it a few hours. Let emergency officials get out there and assess the damage, assess the uh, safety of the property before you go out. And we will be updating you, our community, throughout the evening and early morning hours and all throughout the day tomorrow on the extent of this damage from Hurricane Milton. Yeah, something interesting uh, the governor brought up is, of course, they're trying to get the ports back up and running as soon as possible. And it seems as if they might be able to do that somewhere because he was talking about the ports in Tampa, which you know, most likely will be okay, as well as Manatee County, which Bob is pointing out, looks like they were able to avoid this again as well. Which is great news. That will uh, not impact our day-to-day -day business, daily lives. However, again, so many lives devastated once again by another storm, Helene two weeks ago, and now Milton, impacting so many people. We can expect a lot of damage to manufactured homes. The strong wind gusts outside, again, being described by those who witnessed it, looking outside as violent, just violent wind gusts, something we've never seen before in this area for a long time. That's right, and maybe now, I mean, we don't want to go out yet, but of course everybody's going to start thinking about mm -hmm. the cleanup that happens afterwards, and, you know, Governor DeSantis telling us more than 50,000 linemen, because we know everybody wants their power back on, and we know so many people have lost their power. Here we lost our power briefly as well, too. Yeah, but important to point out, those linemen cannot go out and do any repairs until the wind gusts have subsided. It's I know it's under 30 miles per hour because it's 45 for emergency officials. And then uh, when we were talking to F FPL earlier, under thir around 30. Right. So they cannot do their jobs, but they said they, they are aware of the outages. They will address them, and they move very quickly. Yeah, and then in addition to that, of course, gas is going to be an issue because so many people are going to be running their generators, yeah. not just uh, not just driving. And we know there's over a 1,000 generators the state has, as well as millions of gallons of gas. And I believe we want to send it over to the Sarasota EOC right now. For an update. Here we go. Okay, we are having an audio issue. We're going to look into getting that fixed, and we'll bring it back uh, as soon as we do that. But the Sarasota EOC giving an update. Uh, we are eager to hear those updates yeah. uh, about the extent of the damage on Siesta Key and surrounding areas. That's right. So in the meantime, we'll go back to talking about all the reserves we have. Oh, I believe Sarasota EOC, we might have the sound again. Let's take a listen. company to report that there is a wire down. The utility companies will be out and in force trying to get the power back up and running as quickly as possible. Also, flooded roads. We mentioned not to drive through flooded roads. Um, the water can be very powerful. We don't want you to get caught up and to be um, swept off the road. Um, that has happened in the past in our county, and it's very dangerous. Uh, so do not drive through flooded roads. Uh, we definitely want you to, to be safe within your home. If the power went out while you were in your house, uh, you can turn all of the, uh, unplug all of the appliances and make sure everything is unplugged uh, because now what will happen is the power comes up. There could be a power surge that could damage your appliances. Um, also, um, hopefully, if you uh, have an electric vehicle or anything with an ion lithium battery, uh, you've evacuated that out of the area. But in the event that you have a golf cart or a scooter or an electric vehicle that does get inundated with storm surge, uh, th that battery can catch on fire when it gets in contact with that salt water. So move it away from your home, uh, move it out of you know any of any other property that could catch on fire. Um, and hopefully, you know, we're not in that situation, but maybe you can protect your property if you take those protective measures. Um, so we'll be providing updates as we get more information. Uh, we will, this will be our last uh, broadcast here live at the Operations Center tonight. Again, it's Wednesday night around 8.45 right now. Uh, we will plan on posting still. Our comms team will be here overnight. They'll be posting updates. So if you have power and you can keep um, up to, to date, if you go to our social media pages or our website, which is scgov.net, we'll be posting updates as we have them. Otherwise, we'll be back in the morning uh, with more live updates as we have information and our crews get out 
at first light to be able to see what the impacts are to our county. Um, that lastly, we know that this is a time of great anxiety. Uh, we know that many of you are probably listening either being evacuated or you're here maybe with your power out. Uh, we just wanna know we're here for you and uh, we're with you and we ourselves are, are residents of this county. Um, and so it's our home as well. Uh, so our hearts are in the same place as you. Uh, we're gonna get through this and we're gonna be there for you every step of the way. So thank you very much. Have a, a safe evening and stay tuned. And once again, that is from the Sarasota EOC, the Hurricane Milton making landfall near Siesta Key around 840 as a Category 3 hurricane with winds at 120 miles per hour. And of course, immediately now, everyone is still thinking about, you know, the cleanup and the restoration efforts, talking about uh, power will be restored as soon as possible, but asking residents again, please don't get on the roads, please don't get on the flooded roads. Uh, you know, you don't know what kind of situation you have out there. And then of course, something we saw a lot of in, during Helene summer, these electric vehicles and golf mm -hmm. carts and scooters catching fire from salt water and actually as I was driving toward our makeshift studio today all cars were inside garages but I saw plenty of electric vehicles in the driveway because people didn't want them inside their garages. Yeah, another good reminder uh, with these power outages turn off your breakers turn off the electricity unplug everything uh, and that's with the remove the batteries get them out of the water uh, you do not want everything to pop once you turn it back on. That's right. My goodness, there it is. 840, we have a, C a landfall at Siesta Key as a Category 3. And right now, we want to go to our Michaela Redman, who's joining us from the Sarasota EOC. Here at the EOC, town officials from Longbow Key holding a press conference after all of their safety personnel were evacuated. Now, one thing they want to let residents know and prepare them for is how the area will look after the storm. This storm, as we know, will bring hurricane force winds and rain with a projected 10 to 15 foot storm surge. The highest water will occur between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. on the island Thursday morning. Tropical storm force winds will depart our area sometime between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. We estimate right now that about 98 percent of the island is evacuated and we are grateful for that. Water is off, power and gas will remain on until they are lost. While we don't know yet what the damage this storm will bring, we know that it will be significant. While the wind and rain are a concern, the projected surge is the greatest concern. For comparison, Hurricane Helene had a surge estimated at five to six feet, damaged 2,000 properties, and had an estimated cost damage of about $175 million. This storm will likely far exceed those impacts. Tipton says they are going to work as quickly as possible to get residents back out to Longboat Key after the storm passes, but he says that's going to take time. Reporting in Sarasota, Michaela Redman, ABC7 Your local station. All right. Wow. Those are some astounding numbers, Summer, that we just heard because he's saying Helene only had five to six feet storm surge. We know it's going to be much greater this time around with Milton. And he said it damaged 2,000, about 2,000 properties for a total estimated cost of $175 million. I, I can't wrap my head around all the claims that are that are coming in and all the damage that has been sustained from these two storms, Helene and now Milton, uh, even as simple as roof tiles. Uh, structural damage it, it's it's ginormous right and then of course there's something that you can't even put a price tag on people's lives mm -hmm. and in Longbow Key they are very they're pretty sure that they might lose some very precious lives because 100 to 200 people did not evacuate yeah and we'll uh, continue to follow the situation there and bring you the latest as soon as we learn it but again uh, Hurricane Milton making landfall approximately 840 last uh, tonight near Siesta Key and uh, Category 3, 120 mile per hour winds. That is, I mean, and of course, it's better news. I don't want to say good news, but better news in the sense that Bob, uh, you know, Leslie, our entire first alert team had expected it to be much, much stronger. Um, they were thinking Cat 4, you know, or very strong Cat 3. This was much weaker than that. And uh, emergency officials bringing up just the tension 
uh, the nerves, just everyone very intense right now. All right. And we have another phoner, live phoner, with the chief of police with the Palmetto Police Department. Uh, we're going now live to Palmetto Police Chief Scott Tyler. Can you hear us, Ty Chief Tyler? Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you for joining us. And uh, how how is the situation in Palmetto right now? Oh, it sounds like we're having a little difficulty with him. Chief Tyler, are you there? All Give right. Me just a oh, there he is. Can you hear us, Chief Can Tyler? You hear me? Yes, yes, we hear you. Wonderful. All right, I'm going to stand in. I'm going to stand in the only spot I got reception in the building. Oh, boy. Okay. Appreciate Can you that. give us a situation on on what's going on in the city of Palmetto right now in North Manatee County? So probably for the past couple of months, it's a torrential rain and high winds. It certainly has picked up here in the last hour or so. I understand that the storm just made landfall probably maybe 30 minutes ago. Yes, in Siesta Key. Uh, we're still, yeah, yeah. So um, we're, we're sitting here watching the radar, and, and uh, I think that we've got a pretty pretty nasty band that's going to be coming through pretty soon. But that's what's going on. Um, a lot of sporadic power outages in Palmetto. Uh, there it was some street flooding when I was last out there as, uh, as the sun was going down. But, um, you know, so far, so good. Um, you know, obviously, in the unit, it's hard for us to do damage assessments, um, you know, because, you know, the officers have to, have to stay safe themselves. We don't want to drive into flooded waters. We don't want to drive into power lines and things like that. But, um, you know, um, so far, the storm surge risk has uh, radically diminished, and that's what we're really, really concerned about here. So, um, you know, we're, we appreciate a lot of our residents um, heeded the warnings and left and are sheltering elsewhere. And, um, you know, at first light, we'll be out there with our public works people doing damage assessments and getting the roadways open. And, um, you know, we'll just keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, Chief, do you have any uh, priority areas you can tell us about at first light that you'll be checking out? Well, you know, it's, it's nice that Palmet is, you know, it's seven square miles and it's pretty condensed, so we can cover the city pretty quickly. So, you know, obviously we, we check our main roads first to make sure that they're clear and then we get into the neighborhoods. But, you know, we can usually, within an hour or two, do a pretty thorough damage assessment and um, get out there removing trees and things like that. I know a lot of homes on the water there. Uh, I saw video pictures from friends already showing the water creeping up to the homes inside the bottom floor. So are you expecting to see a lot of damage to homes? Yes, we are. And, and, you know, again, with this storm, as it was coming in, one of our big concerns was going to be the storm surge. Um, you know, we all know what the storm surge was forecast for this area. And luckily, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. But, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago with Helene, um, we saw the worst storm surge that I've ever seen in 30 years of serving here in the city of Palmetto. Um, and, um, you know, so I suspect that the storm surge is probably going to be affecting those same areas. And it will probably be at a level pretty similar to Helene or a, a little bit above. And, you know, so we just uh, are, you know, our hearts go out to these residents that are, you know, that are suffering from this uh, more than once here in, in, a, in a month span. But um, we'll get through it. Yeah, and Chief, uh, just curious, have you been getting any 911 calls in the last couple of hours, or has it been quiet? It's been pretty quiet. Yeah. We're getting alarm calls, but, you know, that makes sense with the uh, with the winds and the, you know, and the rain and things like that. But, no, we, we, we've gotten very few calls, and we hope it, we hope it keeps up. Okay. Uh, here's a concern for residents who evacuated. They don't know if their homes were damaged. Many fear that if their homes were damaged, they could see some uh, people going onto their properties. Uh, what, is, what is your advice for, for people who are concerned about the safety of their, their homes? Well, um, I can say this, that uh, we have um, all of our officers are basically working, working A, B shifts, um, seven days a week moving forward until we need them. So we're going to have lots of police officers out there uh, looking for looking for people that might want to be, be stealing or doing whatever they want to do. We're going to have a large presence out there. And, um, 
you know, just as soon as light starts coming up, uh, we're going to be out there heavily looking at it. Um, you know, as far as um, as far as you know, people that may have uh, relocated for the storm, you know, get back as quick as you can, as safely as you can. Um, talk to your neighbors that may be closer, and uh, we'll be working with uh, with our community to make sure that it stays safe. Okay, Chief, thank you so much for um, just updating us with really valuable information. And we're glad you guys are okay, and we hope those, you know, 911 calls stay down. Thank you. Okay. All right, that seems to be the message, uh, Suncoast wide. Despite the fact that this storm has made landfall, Hurricane Milton, as a Category 3 storm, residents are still being encouraged to stay put stay indoors. Now they have to assess the damage. There could be power lines down, debris scattered. We're still experiencing a high gusts of wind. So it's still, we're not out of the clear just yet. Now, Summer, you asked a really good question about these potential looters. Mm -hmm. And the chief basically saying, don't even think about it because they're going to have all of their officers on a 24-7 standby. Um, so, you know, at the believe, uh, let me just pass that phone off. Uh, so basically saying they're going to be monitoring all of these homes in that seven square mile radius. They're, they're going, they're looking through those homes, they're gonna make sure they're protected and there's no mischief being done. Uh, it's just uh, all I can think of, a lot of work to be done, but it, after Helene, it was amazing to see the community come together. Hundreds of volunteers going out daily on Anna Maria Island to help with repairs and to help people gut out their homes to move forward and that will happen again a little step backward but uh backwards but with the community is strong and i know we will push through and move through with this absolutely all right right now we want to go to our reporter cody, cody butler who is with the governor now the focus is shifting to post-storm response things like search and rescue getting gas to fueling stations Things like that, the state has more than 9,000 National Guard members from across the country on hand to assist in that search and rescue. And they are going to have fuel tankers have a highway patrol escort to the gas stations to help get those gas stations back open, the ones that have ran out of fuel. So the state is still very much in hurricane response mode. Are you willing to spend money to be prepared? And when you're fully prepared, you will end up not using some of the things that you've amassed. The state's also shifting its focus to debris pickup. The state is turning to FEMA for help with some of that because the countdown to the end of hurricane season is on here at the EOC. In Tallahassee, I'm Cody Butler reporting. Okay, Cody, thank you. And Bob, just reminding us the exact time of landfall, Milton making landfall at 8.30, he said, as Siesta Key as a Category 3. Okay, so 8.30, Category 3, 120 mile per hour winds, uh, significant uh, damage expected, power outages countywide, both Manatee, Sarasota counties expected. Many people already experiencing this. And a reminder, you can still listen to ABC 7 News Live on your FM radios, WSRQ, Lecom Radio. You can also download our app, ABC 7, My Sun Coast. Okay, and Cody was talking about gas, that being a big factor here as we're now going into recovery mode. Um, and he was saying, uh, well, the governor was saying we have millions of gallons of gas reserves right now so we should be good for the cars and the generators of course we know there's going to be a mad dash so you might have to be patient i was just thinking that is the right. key word patience yeah. we have been told that a lot i imagine a lot of people have ran out of patience this has been very nerve-wracking the past right. few weeks to go through helene and now milton but again our community is strong and many will work together the resources are there uh Neighbors, family, friends will come together and help each other out. We will move through this. Uh, we don't even know the extent of the damage at this point. Once we get our crews out there, emergency crews out there to assess the damage, we'll have a better idea of what's going on. Right. Paul Meadows, police chief, says they're going out at the first sign of light, and all of his officers will be working nonstop for seven days. Yeah, and we do have the Florida National Guard also on standby. The governor announcing earlier that the National Guard from other states will be coming in. We already have some positioned, we're told, at Riverview High School. And then the governor saying we will be bringing in extra enforcement to help assist law enforcement agencies and communities devastated by this storm rebuild 
gut the homes and clean up the streets and everything else that is included with moving forward with this storm. Okay, and I see our uh, Leslie Lacey standing by. So, Leslie, let's send it over to you. All right, thank you, Karen Summer. Okay, so what's happening now? We know that the eye wall uh, has moved in. The center of the storm has made landfall in Siesta Key. It happened at 8.30, and we're starting to really see some tropical storm force winds and some hurricane winds. So right now we've got uh, some sustained winds out there. The Venice Pier checking in at 78 miles per hour. That's a sustained hurricane force wind, okay? And then gusts up to 97 miles per hour. When I was querying different areas, I was getting uh, uh, winds over 100 miles per hour. Uh, so keep this in mind, you know, we're not through this yet, okay? Now we've got some really intense hurricane strength winds coming through the area. Also, storm surge, still a factor right now. So uh, we're looking at about 9 to 12 feet uh, near to the south of the eye of the storm, okay? And then also, you know, you got some high-end tropical storm force winds that's 60 to 74 miles per hour that is going to be sticking around for hours okay you're still going to get that so again we're not we're not finished you know you still want to stay inside and just brave us through this as it continues dangerous very dangerous hurricane force winds those gusts between 80 and 100 miles per hour and as I mentioned some of them I was querying, and uh, they were even a little bit higher in the area. So we're still under a tornado watch. Uh, I just want to kind of go over the watches and the warnings for you. Uh, the storm surge warning still a factor everywhere in the pink, and actually this extends all the way up to the Bay Area, all the way down here, and also... Uh, as we move across, uh, you can see we're still under a flood watch. We had 1.6 inches coming down into Bradenton uh, right before uh, the storm landed. So here is the latest look at the Titan radar. Again, making landfall just over a half an hour in Siesta Key as a Category 3 storm. Okay, uh, so you can see uh, the back end of it is still not producing a lot of rain, which has really been great, uh, but some real intense winds right now and some intense rain coming through the Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area at this point. Okay, but we're still getting uh, intense winds down here in Venice as well as this whips around. Okay, and now I want to look at your peak storm surge just to give you an idea uh, where I'm talking about here. So six to nine feet now for the Tampa Bay area. That's much better than what was predicted. Predicted, much, much better, but still a lot of storm surge could happen. Six to nine feet, nine to 13 as you move here from Anna Maria Island uh, down towards Inglewood, okay? Storm surge, nine to 13 feet possible, and about eight to 12 feet a little bit further on in the Port Charlotte Harbor, okay? So we're not out of this. We're still going to continue to have uh, some of these intense winds coming through, tropical storm force winds for several hours, and of course, hurricane winds uh, as well, now that we've made landfall. And we're looking about that back wall coming in. Remember the eye wall, the first, the front part of it came in. Now you got the back end that is eventually going to make its way through. And you're going to feel those, or you're going to hear them, hopefully you're in your house, those intense winds as well. So to continue to stay with us. All right, ladies, back to you. Okay, Leslie, thank you so much for that. And Rick, uh, we actually have Chief uh, Holmes Beach Police Chief William Tokager on the phone for us. Chief, can you hear us? I can. And, uh, Chief, we know this made landfall at 8.30 in Siesta Key. Can you tell us what it looked like where you were? Uh, I'm in Palmetto. Uh, we left the island earlier today in Palmetto. It's very windy, uh, very rainy, uh, but we, uh, we're doing well here. Um, and, Chief, what can you tell us about uh, the people of Holmes Beach? Were they able to heed warnings and evacuate? I believe that they did. I think that 98 to 100 percent of the people evacuated. They took the things very seriously. Nobody wanted to repeat a storm surge from the Helene. Uh, with Milton, it was supposed to be twice what it was with Helene. Uh, we're happy that it is not coming to us. We really didn't need another gut punch. Uh, I know that they're getting it south of us, and we feel bad for that, and we're you know praying for them and their safety. Chief, it is uh, Rick Adams here. Uh, and, you know, sorry, uh, everybody's going through this. And uh, let me ask you about the flooding situation. I know Home Speech has a tendency to flood. What is the flooding situation like, and what about the storm surge? The way I 
understanding, we did not have the same amount of storm surge that we had with Helene uh, from the people that are measuring the numbers out there, from the buoys that are there. Uh, so, you know, we dodged the bullet when it came to the flooding. We are getting the winds out there. Uh, we do have a live uh, from Florida University, their uh, Hurricane Research Center. They put up a sentinel out on our beach yesterday. So we're getting some real-time data from that. And Chief, I know uh, at a time, uh, looked like Anna Maria Island and Holmes Beach was going to take this direct hit. Do you feel, I, I know you're getting the northern end of this hurricane, do you feel a little bit of relief from this? Yes, definitely a little bit of relief. Uh, I'll be looking forward to getting out there first thing in the morning to see what it looks like. Uh, but this could have been a if we would have gotten the hit that we were expecting you know, earlier in the day of a Category 4 direct hit to us or us on the lower side if it went into the Tampa Bay, things could have been a lot worse for our island. Uh, that's right. And Chief, just curious, uh, in the last couple of hours, if your department got any 911 calls and if it was quiet. And the second question is, uh, if you guys can tell us about what the plan is at first light. Yes, yeah, so we, not to my knowledge, we haven't had any 911 calls. At first light, we'll have our first in teams that'll be going in. Uh, I'll have uh, Bradenton will be posted up at the intersection to as soon as the winds die down so that uh, nobody goes out to the island until we can go out and assess it and make sure it's safe. So Bradenton Police has been a real champion for us uh, through Helene. They've been out there with us, helping us out. So is Palmetto Police, uh, New College Police, and uh, the Airport Police also uh, came to give us a hand. Uh, we also have... Um, Panama City uh, is coming out wow. to assist us. So they're coming out tomorrow afternoon uh, with a full contingent to assist us as well. Wow. And, uh, Chief, of course, you know, homeowners always have this concern about possible looting at their homes. Can you, I, I know you guys have a plan for that, so can you just give a message to anybody who might be thinking potential mischief? Yeah, anybody that comes out there to do potential mischief will be perp walked out when we arrest them. Uh, we will find them. We will arrest them. We are a very uh, active p police department. We mm -hmm. you know, get the job done out there, and we will make sure that our city stays safe. And, Chief, let me ask you about the debris that was out there from Helene. Do you think that is going to pose any uh, issues or any problems out there? We'll have to wait and see. We know we still had a lot of debris. We were able to get it off of our major roadways. That was a lot of debris all along our major roadways up East Bay, Gulf Drive, Marina Drive, Palm Drive. Uh, all of those roads are our major thoroughfares to get in and out. So that was our first priority. We had to get those out, and then they started doing some of the uh, side streets after that. But there was no way to get all the debris uh, before the storm came. That's just untenable. Uh, the amount of debris that we had, it would take normally a month to get all that up. So um, we're going to get back at it after tomorrow and get more haulers out there, get the debris picked up, and uh, try and get back to uh, normal as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you about damage. What kind of damage are you expecting from Milton? I, I, I know was it a direct hit for you, but I'm sure there's still going to be damage out there. I'm sure there's going to be damage. There's going to be some debris. There's going to be some people that probably lost some roofs. Um, so we'll have to assess it. We have our building department that will be out uh, tomorrow, and they'll be starting to assess damage and uh, doing what we can to help the, our residents and our businesses. Okay, Chief uh, William Tokager, thank you so, so much for checking in with us, and hopefully uh, we can check back in with you throughout this uh, whole process now that we're thinking recovery. Thank you. Yes, and uh, we are not through yet, Chief, so uh, please stay safe uh, for you and all the residents there on Holmes Beach and Anna Maria Island. Very well, thank you. Appreciate you having me on. Okay. All right, Chief, thank you. And now I believe our Chief Meteorologist, Bob Harrigan, is ready, so let's go to our head.
As always is the case uh, with these storms, it's the backside of it that can be dangerous, too. A lot of people think just because they've passed the northeast quadrant uh, that everything's going to get better. It's not. Uh, because it's lacking of rain on the backside, all the air is uh, got open rain. It, it feeds right into the coastline there. We just had a recent report of a gust of 97 miles an hour at the Venice Pier and also sustained wind at hurricane uh, strength, uh, Category 1 reported at the Venice Pier. And in Fort Myers, they're reporting a gust up to 90 to 95 miles an hour and a storm surge all the way down into Fort Myers. So this is not over at this point. We're getting that onshore flow. This is the time of concern for that storm surge. So we haven't had a lot, but now that the center is moved inland, all that wind is now moving onshore. Uh, open rain, too. It doesn't have to go through clouds and showers and storms, so it just feeds directly into the uh, center of the storm. I'm going to step away from this just to show you the Again, numbers, a storm surge of 9 to 12 feet still possible, and that's near and south of the eye. And the eye now is moving through North Sarasota County and uh, continues to move off uh, toward the northeast. Uh, we're still going to see tropical storm force winds. I'm getting a lot of reports from people losing power, and the power outages are happening as a result of that kind of sustained wind. Dangerous hurricane force wind gusts. We just saw that 97 uh, reported at the Venice Pier. Let's go to the radar picture and show you. Uh, so the center is right about here now. So it moved through Siesta Key at 8.30. And now you see these clouds, or at least showers, moving in this direction. That's that onshore flow. That's piling the water up. Uh, thankfully, this is moving pretty fast. So uh, is there a possibility of getting a nine-foot surge? Certainly, especially from about Siesta Key southward all the way down into and around Fort Myers. Fort Myers reporting a four-foot storm surge at this point and still getting onshore flow. So uh, this is kind of the dangerous part of the storm because there's not a lot of rain out there, but there's some str a strong gusty winds, as I just reported, 97-mile-an-hour wind gusts. Uh, you can see some of these reports here. It's still going to be happening here. Tropical storm force winds likely, uh, again, for the next couple of hours at least, maybe even longer, as this storm kind of lingers across our area. And uh, the ground is saturated, so there will be some trees down with this kind of wind. There's no doubt uh, that you're going to see more power outages as we go through the next several hours. Uh, the next graphic, again, showing the center. It's elongated now. When a storm makes landfall, uh, what happens is it loses its fuel. So it's no longer going to be getting stronger. But what it is going to do, it's going to expand its wind field. It was all tight around that center, but now it's saying, well, I can't get stronger, so I'm going to throw my winds out. It's kind of like the ice skater that you see at the end of the routine, right? They're all kind of tucked in, spinning faster and faster. And then at the end, they throw their arms out and they slow down. This is the same thing that's happening with this storm. As it slows down, it's throwing its energy out on either side. So a lot more people are being impacted now by these strong winds, uh, and power outages are occurring as a result of that, again, uh, problem. We're still under a flood warning now, a flood, flash flood warning for most of Manatee County. I'm getting reports, too, that there is some flooding taking place in areas into and around Bradenton as a result of six to seven inches of rainfall in a short period of time. So those flood warnings continue for Bradenton, Palmetto, Parish, Ellington, also out in Rabonia and on Anna Maria Island, obviously up through Hillsborough and Pinellas County. Uh, you've got to look at the satellite imagery, a poorly organized system, but notice the big storms now moving into Sarasota, also along the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. You see the purples, that indicates uh, storm tops up to 50,000 feet plus, and that's uh, bringing some very heavy rainfall throughout those regions. Uh, once again, updating you quickly on uh, the storm itself, it made landfall, as I said, at 830 as a Category 3 hurricane, top winds at 120. And uh, some verification of that, obviously, is that the Venice, um, uh, the Venice Pier, right at the end of it, they have a seaman station, and that seaman station recorded a recent wind gust up to 97 miles an hour. It's still going to cause problems all the way across the state and along the East Coast. You see the area in red there. There is a, uh, a storm surge problem even up to Jacksonville tonight as they're going to get that wraparound back behind this system. So the winds are going to be rotating around in a counterclockwise, and that's going to bring part of the Atlantic Ocean in uh, to some of the coastline there into and around Jacksonville and into and around Daytona Beach. So lots more to go. And we're getting power outages? Oh, power, oh, here's the power outages graphic. Okay, let's, let's show up. We're on that right now. And you can see the numbers going up. In fact, I think it's higher than 302,000. Leslie, if, if I'm not mistaken, it's higher than 302. It's almost a million people now without power in uh, and around West Central Florida. So those numbers continue to rise. Although that says 302,000, it's up to 
850,000 people without power now across the state of Florida. And you can see Manatee County, 66. And that's just recent reports. I would imagine that number is a lot higher. So a lot of people are losing power uh, as a result of those strong winds that are blowing through with that eye and near that eye. So it's not over. Stay close to your safe room. Trees will be falling uh, as a result of these strong wind gusts up to near hurricane force strength, even higher, up to 100 mile an hour gusts expected. Uh, with there's 804,669 people, uh, at least residents, without power at this point, and that number promises to go higher as we go through the next several hours. I know some people are really nervous, obviously very anxious. Uh, people along the beaches, you know, that have property that they cleaned up, there's still that potential for high, high surge. It's not over yet. And it's because of this long duration west to southwest wind, because the storm is moving basically parallel to the east coast, we're going to continue with that west to actually northwest wind, which piles all that water up along the coast. Thankfully, uh, we're not at high tide, but we are approaching high tide, which is expected to be about two and a half feet at 4 a.m. But it started uh, a few hours ago, so it's going to go higher and higher. We're going to check some gauges for you and get back to you on that, too. Uh, once again, if you have any photos, send them to mysuncoast.com. Go to mysuncoast.com, and actually you'll see a share it tab. We don't want you to you know, get in danger, obviously, with uh, being out there. You don't want to be outside. But if you have a, a camera that had taken some pictures, you know, sometimes we get the ring doorbell cameras that show some uh, pretty incredible vi video, you can always send them in, too. We appreciate it. Uh, again, that's very easy to do. MySuncoast.com, share a tab, and uh, you can share video and pictures on that. Uh, so as you see right there, uh, Karen and Rick, the storm by far not over yet, even though it's made landfall. Keep that in mind. You know, people talk about landfall. Yeah, that's great. That means the storm's not going to grow anymore or get stronger. However, it's going to spread its wings, and it is going to, again, uh, cause some problems for the next few hours at least before it starts to settle down a little bit. Now we're going to send it over to Rob, who's got uh, some of the video, in fact, uh, from a viewer that we're going to see. Rob? do it when it is safe. This is not the night to do it. Nonetheless, we are getting some elements sent in from some of our viewers. We want to take just a moment to share just a couple of those that we really caught our eye on. So let's go ahead and pull up the very first one if we can. And this is from Tiffany Ann Nesbat. Tiffany's sending in these pictures of what appears to be a transformer exploding right there. You see it right there in downtown Sarasota. This just a little bit earlier this evening, a, ma a major show right there in itself. If we uh, go ahead and advance on to the next one, Tiffany also sending in another shot for us, and again from downtown Sarasota, just magnificent lighting show out there. It looks like almost some sort of a transformer, right, or something blue. We know so many thousands of people in Metro Sarasota out of power out this hour. Maybe that is a part of it. Take a look at this one as well. This is from Jeff Peugeot, and this is actually, it looks like some sort of a uh, part of a lighting grid or a light that came off of a, uh, a building in downtown. So that was something also that really caught our eye. Uh, let's go ahead and take up the next slide if we can and see what you guys captured all throughout the evening here because there are so many images that we want to paint the picture of. And this is of a, a roof really coming right off of a home here. Uh, this is Buckingham Club off 41 south of Stickney Point, a roof literally just peeling right off of it looks like a mobile home, a manufactured home community there. Of course, the high winds as they hit top speeds a little bit earlier tonight. No match for any type of homes, including this one. Look at the trees blowing there. The power, very, very swift with these. We're going to see this all throughout the night. And again, we appreciate you sharing these with us. We want you to do it safely and from a vantage point that you feel comfortable to send it to us. Let's go on to the next one if we can. A familiar friend to the ABC7 family sending us in another great shot here. This is from Lisa Modric. This is from Lisa Modric, the Sarasota Bay. She is wife of our friend meteorologist Mike Modric, taking a picture of Sarasota Bay. This is El Conquistador near Bayshore Gardens. Look at the waves. Look at the power of the motion of all that water. We can never underestimate how strong water is, how damaging the power, the force, and you can see how high those tides were. And this is still light out. Keep in mind, so we're looking, I don't know, maybe 5, 6 p.m. tonight. Not really sure, but Lisa, we always appreciate it. And uh, hopefully 
you and uh, everybody else are safe in the building there. But look at the power of the waves in themselves. Absolutely incredible, the power itself. Let's go on to the next one. Mr. Bruce Hiller. Bruce sending us some pretty good images here. And it shows the power and the magnitude, even of old trees. That tree right there snapped, pushed completely over, much like a twig. No match for the wrath of the winds out there. Uh, it looked like there was some sort of a tape around it before. We don't know if they were trying to secure that in place, if it had been recently planted, transplanted, or what the story was. Look at the bands of rain. You see the rain moving again almost at that side angle there right across as the ripples from the water kind of keep up with the rain moving through the air the trees no match for the winds at top speed right there the tree simply blown right over looks like it was clean right out of its track snapped right off at that point uh, we do have another one again folks using there i am this is a little bit better thank you so much monitors there so i can see what's going on there good shot here this is drone footage of what appears to be a funnel cloud from Tequista, the Tequista area, Bo shooting this for us. Look at the power of this. We talked about this since about 2, 2.30 this afternoon. The power of the storm, not only just from the actual cell of the storm itself, from the actual uh, hurricane, but also the pop-up storms, the bands of rain, and in this case, the apparent twisters that popped up. We know at least one that we talked about a little earlier this afternoon, popping up in Lee County. We know the governor saying to us about two hours ago in that press conference from the state capitol, at least 125 homes uh, destroyed, damaged. We don't know exactly where those are out location-wise, but still, still, that is just the tip of the iceberg we know in this case. So again, as Bob was talking about and alluding to a few minutes ago, you can go to the, mysuncoast.com, go to the Share It tab, and when it is, in fact, safe to do so, we want to hear from you because you will help paint and narrate the story of what is going to be a historic storm that we will be talking about for a very long time. So capture those pictures, capture the videos, send them to us, uh, and give us a little background. You know, that's what we, uh, we have you to help us tell the story, to narrate. So give me a little context. Give us a little background. We're happy to share them on air with our viewers and let them know the power and let this be a major, major, there it is right there, the share it page. You can see, you can just kind of click and upload your media right there. It is a fairly simple, fairly quick process, and it comes right to us. Our producers sift through all these. Again, this is just the beginning of them, but do it with caution and make sure that you and your family are safe because obviously no picture or video is worth your safety. That's just a sampling. That's just from hour one. Can you imagine what it's going to look like tomorrow throughout the night? Again, as we continue to navigate Hurricane Milton together. That's going to wrap it up for me for now. From the desk, I'm going to send it now back to Rick and to Karen. Guys, back to you. All right, Rob, uh, we do appreciate that. That is just a taste, a small taste of what's going on out there, and we do rely on the viewers out there to help share the story and help tell the story. Yeah, I know. You, me, both our phones have been blowing up with people. Um, something I want to relay, uh, Bob and Leslie telling us this storm surge warning, that's actually in effect until 8 in the morning tomorrow so we really want our viewers to you know listen to that because it really is as Bob was saying the dangerous part of the storm right now with these winds and the storm surge so we really don't want anyone going outside right now thinking okay well it made landfall which we know landfall 830 siesta key cat 3 but it's still very dangerous out there. oh yeah it, uh, it you know like bob was saying we have a long way to go with the storm we're not done yet and what was a little ominous is i had stepped outside uh, right after the height of the storm you know we were in the middle of the eye wall it was so ominous it was so so quiet out there and it can be deceiving you, you think the storm's over with but no, they do have a long way to go. Yeah, that's exactly what they tell us, right? Like when it's really calm after it's been crazy. All right, we want to actually go right to our chief meteorologist, Bob Harrigan. Bob. Uh, thanks, Karen and Rick. Uh, what we're looking at is the National Weather Service reports uh, that are coming in. We've got a direct connection to them, and uh, spotters from all over the area send them information, and we just got a report at the Venice Gardens uh, right now. Venice Gardens in Venice, Florida, in South Venice, I should say. Uh, this is, again... Uh, from Venice Gardens, two miles west of Venice Gardens, they're reporting storm surge flooding going on at present. So it's uh, in progress. Look out. 
obviously, if you haven't evacuated, you want to stay to high ground, uh, you should have evacuated. Don't do it now, even if the water starts coming into your home. You do not want to leave because there's so much debris out there. And any kind of wind gust could pick up debris and hurt you quite uh, severely. So keep that in mind. Uh, again, we're getting reports uh, from a spotter in Venice. Uh, it's two miles, uh, again, west, I believe, of Venice Gardens. That's what it says here. Uh, they're reporting storm surge flooding. They don't give a height yet. Uh, but with this onshore flow, it continues to be a problem. And again, this map is showing uh, there's still the potential for three feet uh, there near and around Cortez along uh, Anna Maria Island, uh, much less than was projected. However, it's still three feet or, or greater there than three feet. And you can see even out on Lido, this was red earlier tonight, but it's in yellow. And this is, uh, again, uh, that should show greater than three feet uh, and just up to about five feet uh, for those folks there. Uh, we go down the road, Siesta Key could still be seeing this. I don't think it's going to be the nine feet, but hold on. We're going to see this west wind for a lot longer duration. You know, as uh, the storm went by just uh, about two weeks ago, uh, we saw the flood and waters come in, the surge come in, and they quickly receded. I talked to a gentleman who has a property out there, and he said, yeah, it was about two hours, and it was gone. You have to realize we're heading into high tide. It's getting higher and higher, and that high tide is going to exacerbate the problem as we go through uh, 4 a.m. Now, after 4 a.m., it starts to go down, but it's going to take its time because this is a long-duration west-to-southwest wind, and then eventually turns to northwest by uh, tomorrow morning sunrise. Uh, again, not as severe uh, projections here, but we are seeing the problems even up into Charlotte Harbor. So once again, I'll check this one more time before I send it back to you guys to see. Uh, oh, yeah, we've got eight inches of rainfall, uh, eight inches of rainfall reported in northwest Bradenton uh, with the storm so far. Eight inches, a big cell, a big, the, the northwest portion of the eyewall went through Bradenton and created eight inches of rainfall. So the, the, stor the stories are coming in. Uh, again, emergency flash flood warning uh, for Hillsborough, Manatee, and Pinellas County that just uh, went into effect, again, or, or stays in effect, uh, and expires Thursday at uh, 2.30 a.m. They may extend that. Uh, there have been funnel clouds reported near Siesta Key at 9.25 by a ham, uh, a ham operator there. And it looks like, uh, let's see if anything else near us, uh, reports of the eight inches in Bradenton, Key Royale on Holmes Beach, an automated